Howdy chat. How we doing? Hopefully you guys are having a, a good start to your day. Uh, welcome to the stream. As per usual, I'm Scotty D49. Uh, glad to be hanging out with you guys today. Um, hope you guys have had a great week. Uh, thanks for joining me on this lovely Saturday. It's nice and sunny outside uh, here in Canberra. Um, so yeah, today we're going to keep on cracking on with the hobby. Um, so yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to be working on the Marines, more Death Watch. We're going to finish those guys off, hopefully. Uh, big shout out to the Gassinator, my 50th follower, which is awesome. <laughs> Mango Smasher in there for the Lurk Patrol. <laughs> appreciate it, my man, appreciate it. Um, but yeah, no, I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, um, hey, Game on Steve, how you going, my man? I believe we were just talking about Discord. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be working on the Death Watch, and we'll probably get us some, um, Marines today as well. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, just... Also, I'm not sure if you saw the Facebook page. If you haven't, head over there. Yeah, nice, Steve. Nice. That's good to hear, man. Um, over on my Facebook page, I've actually... Um... <laughs> That's funny. It looks for us. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Um, yeah, so I actually got my new case. I got a Battle Phone Pack 1520 for my birthday slash Christmas, because my birthday was starting November, Christmas, of course, being 25th of December. And so I got that for myself, and the thing is awesome. I love it. It's exactly what I needed to store new stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be uh, really good. Um, I've got it sitting under my desk at the moment. It's uh, I packed it full, so now I can actually get back to rebasing all my Marines, because they all need to be on uh, 32s now. So I need to work on that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna switch over. Hey, thanks, Mango. Yeah, fifty. Just got it there. The gasinator helped me out with that one. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, let's hopefully hit the three concurrent and keep that going. Um, but yeah, we're gonna uh, switch over to some painting, which I believe should be this one. Yeah, sick. Um, so, where we got up to last time is we were working on this guy right here. Um, which actually, that's probably, I'm not sure why that's not showing up correctly. I should have had it the right way. Um, let me just manipulate this camera for a second. Because this guy should actually be the other way. There we go. That's better. Um, so, as you can see, we've got the, um, the last Death Watch veteran for the Storm Bolter unit that I've been working on. But, however, I have got the basing done on the other dudes ready to go and the legs for this guy that are fully complete. So, what we're actually going to do, we're going to do the bases first so we can get them done. Um, primarily for this, I actually like to use Mournfang Brown. Um which is what I'm going to, you know, jump in with. So, it, and I'm actually using the air paint as well for the base, so that I'm able to uh, get nice coverage over the bases as well. And so, it, it just works nicely. I used to use Mournfang Brown, but really water it down. Um, but I found that it didn't actually... Like, I'd go through a lot of it. Whereas, what I actually want to do is just do the bases. Uh, so, I need to pick out my brush. Let's go the base coating brush. Hey, faces and bases. How you doing, my man? Thanks for joining us. Hope you, you're having a good Friday, my man. There's a couple of us here as well. Uh, so yeah, I was just uh, telling the guys earlier and chatting to some of the other streamers that I've met along the way. You know, Mango Smasher and Olds there as well. Um, yeah, hit 50. 50 followers. 
Yeah, I'm going well. Going well, man. Had a had a pretty good week. Just ready to get some uh, painting down and done on this fine Saturday morning for me. It's uh, as I was just saying, it's beautiful weather here. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been pretty good. It's starting to warm up here. Um, and if you don't know Canberra too well, um, it's got two extremes. Um, Steve, I will get you into the live streaming channel. Just give me a second. If you join channel one, I'll be able to move you from there. Oh, let's, let me just see if I can do this properly. Uh, it's not wanting me to scroll up. Um, see if you can join the waiting room, Steve. And we can go from there. Yeah, faces and bases. 50 years needed for affiliate minimum. Um, but it's the viewers that is the big point for me at the moment. Um, if you're just joining us fresh, uh, welcome to the stream. Um, you know, it's great to have you with us this morning. Uh, we're going to have uh, Game on Steve joining us in chat in a second. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I should be able to unmute you. You there, Steve? You've got yourself muted, so... Um, I'll see if I can... Handle that. Um... Yeah, but it's going to be a great morning. Um, hopefully, let's see if I can do this. You there, Steve? You should be able to chat in the channel now. Hopefully that should be coming through and you can hear me. But yeah. Hopefully uh, you guys are having a, having a great morning so far. Um, or evening wherever you are in the world. Face and bases, what's been happening my man? Have you been uh, working on some hobby recently? What have you been working on? Ah, okay, let me just adjust that for you. I think it's going to be an issue on the permissions. How's that, Steve? Whoa. Radio. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Good, good. Thanks. Yeah, I have a mute button on my headset, but um, I'm sort of on a desk which is behind my computer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I have a hobby desk and a computer desk. Nice. So, yeah. I think uh, the music might be a little bit uh, interfering here. Let me just adjust that a little bit. Um, otherwise... Yeah, let's just can the music for there. Um, but yeah, how you going, Steve? What's been happening? Lots of work, lots of work. Uh, very busy, which um, last weekend I specifically decided I wasn't going to do any work on the weekend. Yep. And so I actually got a start on my big guys for my Beast of Chaos. Yeah, nice. So, um, where we go? Face and bases. is... Um, Yeah, nice, man. That's awesome to hear. Um, you know, if you've uh, got some picks, feel free to jump in my uh, Discord and share them there. So that'll be that'll be good to see some of those, my man. Um, but yeah, so uh, how many points are your your beast you got? I think you were saying you got like two, three thousand points, Steve. 
Yeah, well, so I've got 2,000 point list, but I've got probably about 3,000 point because I've got, say, extras for summoning in. Yeah. Um, and, you know, extras for just switching up the list as well because um, I suppose I can play a fair amount of the big guys in a 2,000 point list. Obviously, I can, I'm limited to four. But mm. um, uh, when you drop it down, some of the big guys aren't as effective as some of the other ones. So I've kind of got... I've got two Gorgons, two Cygors, I've got the uh, Chimera, I've mm -hmm. got uh, the Jabbish Life, or however you say it. Yep. Um, are those the only big guys? Well, I've got the Gargan as well, which is on a smaller base, and I've got the Cockatrice, which is on a smaller round base as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I chop and change those guys depending on how I'm wanting to play, but I've got, what is it, 60 Raiders? Yeah, yeah. Ungors and um, Gores do take up a fair amount of work. Like when I was, uh, I think we were chatting last time. I was considering getting into fantasy for um, beastmen for fantasy, I should say. Um, that you know, I was looking at working on the um, the army. It was going to be actually Minotaur based. Is what I was going to go for. Yeah, yeah. So. Which was good. Like I had a Doom Bull already, and the model was sick. I just haven't um, managed to go and get any work on it, and then turn around and the world blows up. Yeah. So, but no, it's definitely a, definitely a great list, I'd say. Which I got to build and uh, just prime the beast when the world blew up, but um, shortly afterwards because everything changed um all our projects and that switched around so i was super busy yeah um cha changing all that stuff around um so yeah the first the first part of uh the pandemic i was like okay i'm probably gonna have a bit of time and then i was like no nope, i've got less time yeah yeah whereas for me it was a bit of the reverse i actually was on stand down for about six weeks there at my old job and so i had in a massive excess of time and so first two weeks was like yeah sick let's get a crap load of painting done and then two weeks i was like yeah nah i'm like i'm pretty bored hey <laughs> it hit me and then i found out a week or so in advance that we we're going back to work i was like right let's get stuff done again <laughs> so yeah yeah have you managed to get any games in with them um, I've got, I think I've got about three or four games in with them. Yep. Um, I think it's a 50-50 win-loss. Yeah, nice. Um, I think it, it really depends on, I suppose, the scenario and um, who I'm playing against at the moment because um, I don't, I, I'm not playing what I can see uh, as a really competitive list. Mm. Um, so I've got, I'm playing, what is it, the, the Dark Walkers, because I like the idea of just jumping in and ambushing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and a lot of people play the All Herds because you get the extra CP for summoning and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I like the craziness of, you know, jumping in, jumping out type stuff. And um, then with them, uh, so I can put my War Herd, which is the, the big guys, uh, well, it's the Cygors and the Gorgons, really. I can put them into, essentially, reserves as well. Um, and I can bring them in second round, not just uh, first. Mm. Is it, or is it, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, but the um, but the other thing I get, it cost me a campaign point, but I get to uh, move any model um, from the army, basically, so that they're within nine inches of somewhere. And so... Uh, it started with a Chimera near my um, Shaman mm -hmm. and spend the CP on that and basically have the Chimera leap basically to within 12 and just fire breath. Yeah, uh, nice. Somewhat, yeah. And, um, you know, if I go within 9, then basically... Uh, sorry, if I go to 9, basically I have a 7-inch charge because I get plus 2. Yeah, sick. And the Chimera is 
ridiculous with melee as well. Mm. Like, you know, you like it's sort of that suicide mission, but it's a big lot of uh, wounds and everything, and a big lot of damage if they don't take it out. So they focus on that, and I try and just take objectives. Yeah, so you kind of throw it in their face, uh, use it as a distraction unit, and do whatever else you want to do with the rest. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, face and bases, I replied in the thread, dude, that librarian looks sick. Um, especially the inner robe that you've done, all the different um, patchwork. Looks awesome, dude, really well done. Is that in the... Channels? Yeah, so that'll be in the 40k hobbying Discord thread. Ah. So I think he's still got the sword to go, but it's looking uh, looking pretty good. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> but yeah. Nah. Have you been um, getting any 40k games in, as well, Steve? Um. Got the first half of the league at Jolt in, mm -hmm. uh, but then um, the last few we do work at night as well, so um, just trying to get some of this project stuff done. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've missed the last few, and I don't. I'm not going to try and uh, make them up because it's just going to be too much. Yeah. Nah, fair enough. How are you finding ninth so far? Um, I'd probably say I'm not finding ninth right now because, I mean, the, the rules that they've changed is, is cool. I don't think they've really done too much, but with the codex changes, that's that's where it's uh, it's really happened, especially with the Space Marines. Yeah. Um, and so you've only got, you've only got uh, the books that have come out, um, but you want to have... You want to have everyone with their new codexes mm. to to really get how it's working. Yeah, which I suppose they're gonna they're gonna try and do like if they're doing two codexes a you know a month or something like that, it's gonna be um you know uh pretty pretty quick on the turnaround. But you know if they're doing all the supplements and stuff, that'll take time. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I don't know where I sit with the what is it the tactical deployment um the the other chapter approved book that they've got. Um, yeah. I like to set up a thematic. I like to set up a thematic board. Mm. Um, even with the AOS, where it's got the, um, you've got the deployment rules for setting up the terrain for the battlefield, not just your own faction terrain. I kind of, I, I don't like it because it's just like you end up, okay, well you can either set it up so it's ideal for you know, the mission and your army, but then the terrain ends up looking like a dog's breakfast. Yeah. It's just in, it, it's all the, all down one side or it's, um, it's, it can be all spread out when the other guy might be trying to get them as close as possible. So it just, it doesn't look thematic for me. Yeah. Yeah. Fair um, enough. I haven't looked too much into the tactical deployment one. Um, you know, I have, like, generally, I will actually, like, m for most stream games you'll notice, or um, just games in general, I prefer to set up quite a symmetrical board, so it doesn't really matter in terms of deployment zones. Like, one player's going to be on the same footing as the other. Yeah. So then, you know, it's it's there's no advantageous spot. Yeah. Uh, symmetrical boards for, like, you know, one-off games... Oh, that's a washing machine. Um, <laughs> are um, pretty good, but uh, for narrative campaign games, I like to have them specifically where they're non-symmetrical, and you you really do have that attacker defender sort of positioning. Yeah, like I, I, I also, yeah, go. I also like to play them where like your army lists aren't equal. Like you know, someone might someone who's got you know the the, the tactical advantage of the terrain might have a lesser force. Mm. Yeah. So face and bases. Yeah. Um. Currently for us, social rules in Canberra are actually pretty good. Um. We're s we're sitting on like no cases for what I think it's about two three months now. Um. So we're actually pretty pretty relaxed in terms of our um. 
social distancing stuff. Um, but our game store is pretty big. They're allowed uh, 100 people in the store at any one time. So they're actually uh, quite well spaced out. Um, so we were able to get games in regularly, but there was a period of time earlier in the year where we weren't able to. There's also talk about uh, upping that to 500 here. Yeah, really? Like, yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it was, whether that was 500 in an outdoor space only or something, but yeah, they're look there's, there's, there's increases that they're looking at as well. Um, the only problem was they didn't implement it uh, recently because we did have the one case two weeks ago ah um, yeah it was a diplomat i, I remember I think it, was it. Another, it was another diplomat but mm. like they, they 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 quarantined and they're now recovered anyway so yeah know, it's yeah it's 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 a thing that's gonna happen like every so often we'll get a new case or uh, it's just something we'll have to manage going forward i reckon but yeah um our uh, game store face and base is actually uh, about 400 square meters base uh in terms of its footprint and it's got like 10 i think it's 10 8 by 4 tables steve you could probably confirm oh, uh, we got we got a row of three and then there's what four um but then you cut out one of those because there's a half table so there's probably 11 yeah i think if you put so the th two four by fours together you get 11 so there's there's 11 then there's two half tables mm. um which you can you can easily play like your your three foot by three foot games on, uh, say your Guild Ball or something else. But there's then two separate sort of uh, actual rooms that have tables themselves. Ah, uh, so Lewis has set um, up tables in there as well now, permanently. Well, so there's there's tables, but they're generally used for RPG. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, people do go in and play games when it's really busy, and you know he's got the he's got the um, six by four. Uh, wooden boards that he can put on the magic tables as well. So there's a lot of room for war gaming. Yeah. If ma if magic's not happening. <laughs> yes, this is true. Which on Tuesday nights they generally are, but it's not many players. So. But yeah. So yeah, um, face and bases. It, it yeah, it's it's kind of like that. We host tournaments quite frequently there. Um, it's a li large store. Um which is quite nice and it's in a in an industrial area so it's you know it's got a larger footprint uh for quite quite a decent space as well and yeah so it, it's great store um yes yes <laughs> the eternal struggle of magic versus tabletop um what's your uh, gaming situation like where you're at phases Are you, uh, Steve, are you going to be at the um, RLG meet next weekend? Um, probably, they can't, I, I won't really know until next weekend. <laughs> yeah, fair um, enough. <laughs> and, and they kind of need to know if people are available to set up the games. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm considering going down for the Saturday. Sundays are always a non-starter for me. Um, but yeah, if you're going up free, I might take the streaming rig with me and we can record a game if you end up coming down. Like, I'm just more going to go just to hang out, I suppose. But, yeah. Like, I've been trying to trying to get games in regularly. But, I think ninth edition has been quite good. Um, being a Marine player, um, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the two wounds, I will say, is, is a massive boon. Especially for Death Watch. Because... Yeah. Because, I mean, otherwise it's like, oh, cool, I was paying, uh, you know, like 17 points of Marine, and that would be for Special Issue Ammo, and I would have one wound. And so it was, like, really rough. Yeah, I only play uh, the Primaris, uh, just thematically, really, it's the same at Magic, but it's just a lot better when you're just playing Primaris by themselves. Mm. But, um, yeah, the... um. I was quite surprised at that, actually. Uh, there was a lot of complaints early on with Eighth, obviously, and, and Primaris. But, um, yeah, I was surprised that they, they went that way. But um, I think it works out. I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it also does, I think, mechanically, it brings back some of the things like 
you know, um, Devastator Squad, I think, undoubtedly is way better than the Hell Blasters. Um, with two wounds. I think with one wounds it was a bit hit and miss. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I find now with Death Watch, like, yeah, the heavy weapons are limited, but still, like, I'm able to take a veteran, 10 man veteran squad. I take four heavy bolters and the rest with stalkers. And they're just able to yep. put out so much two damage firepower with AP, one AP, two minimum. Uh, that's, it's just crazy. And that's like 250 odd points. And so that, you know, I put the Watchmaster with them to give them re-rolls and all that kind of stuff. And they go really well, um, I find. Uh, faces and bases, um, oh man, that, yeah, I know, you guys just went in for another, um, lockdown, um, which is rough. I've got family over in England, so, uh, I was going to say, where's he at? But yeah, England. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, right, it's, it's been pretty, uh, crazy for you guys by looks then. Uh, hopefully it eases up soon and you're able to get some games in. Um, have you been able to play on um, Tabletop Simulator at least? Um. Hey, Quok Molly, thanks for the follow, my man. Or ma'am, I should say, because that happened the other week. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's... Um, it's a bit rough to be able to see how that's gone, dude. Like, I know there are other places in the world that are similar to you guys, so know that uh, we feel for you over here. Oh, dude, the, the war on grey plastic. I've been smashing on that war all year. Um, so, yeah. What have, you, what have you been working on apart from that librarian you posted up in terms of your own hobby? But yeah, how are the um, the painting of the astral lines going for you, Steve? Sorry. Oh, your your Marines. How how's the painting going for them? Oh, uh, 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 desert lions. Desert lions. Um, That's close. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty good. Um, I, I was going back and doing uh, some details on you know some of the plebs, essentially. Yeah. Um, but uh, I did buy. Uh, was uh, a couple of the newer stuff um, a while ago, and I basically really uh, pushed them out to get them for the league. Uh, what was it? The infiltrators and inceptors, and, um, not inceptors, the incursors. The infiltrators and the other ones, incursors. That's it. Um, yeah, so I pushed them out uh, pretty quickly uh, at the start of the league, mm. um, just because you know I didn't want to put them on the table without them being painted. Yeah. Um, but I also um, got some of the Taraxi for the, my Admec. Mm -hmm. um, so they're the, the parachuter guys. Yeah. Um, just I like I like the look of the model, but I also like the the rule that they've got where you can jump them in, but then you can jump them out on the next turn. Ah, so they've got like the old school Morlock rule for the Tyranids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. It's just that, that idea of like, okay, he, he, here's five of them, dude. If you don't if you don't kill them this round, um, I'm probably going to jump them out and then um, have have two of, two groups of the five, and so basically leapfrogging them. I just think it's a hilarious way to play them. Yeah, yeah. It's probably not it's probably not really that great, <laughs> but yeah. No, it's it sounds good. Um... Yeah, I, how do you find the infiltrators and curses go? Um, it's a bit of a mix. Um, I think uh, if you play them, if you play them with the Phobos captain, or well, you don't have to have the Phobos captain. I think you can have the lieutenant as well. But there's the Lord of Deceit uh, warlord trait um, that you can take. That's what it is, I think. Um, and so if you take the Lord of Deceit warlord trait. You can move up to three units at the start. Mm. So, y you know, if you if you want to hedge your bets, I suppose on starting first and being able to um, 
take some of those primary objectives because you can score those in the first round. Um, is it well, it's not the primaries, the secondaries, sorry. Secondaries, secondaries you can secondaries. score in first yeah. round. Are ter- uh, the, uh, the primaries you can only score from turn two yeah. onwards. Yeah. So, you know, if you take things like, you know, Dominion or whatever, and you can deploy those guys out, and you know you can get your one, one or two near your deployment zone, um, and you hedge your bets on that, then you can score some points early, but you kind of leave them out. But I th- they do have survivability. I found that, like, it does take like two or three rounds for my opponent to take them out. So over those rounds, they're, they're contesting that objective. Yep. And it, it forces the opponent to have to go at them because um, if they don't, you're going to gain you're going to gain those on the second turn. You're going to gain those primary points for holding those objectives. But you also, if you're taking it that way, you're going to gain the extra points for, say, the Dominion or holding more or whatever it is that you're taking because it... It synergizes with the primaries of holding the objectives. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think the infiltrators are better than the incursors, just for the base of that reroll, the the extra deployment stuff that they can do, um, at least on paper. Oh, oh yeah. Look, um, I don't think... I, like, if the other person plays well, um, they're going to ignore that mine. But I like the idea of putting a mine down. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't done anything with it. <laughs> Yeah. So, I don't know. It's just interesting when you can pay more points to take those guys over standard inf- intercessors and, you know, the infiltrators actually have the, the ability to do stuff, whereas the incursors aren't, you know, they don't have too much the, utility otherwise. And the incursors are more, I think, than the inf- They're 24 points a model. And then you pay, I think it's 10 points for the command. For the oh, yeah, yeah. the array. Oh, sorry. For the array on the so which ones? The infiltrators are the ones with the the comms array, though, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the the comms array. If you take a Phobos captain and a Phobos lieutenant, that comms array is just great. Hmm. Like the, I think the, you've got to build the army around them to do that. Yeah, and if you make your Phobos captain uh, chapter master, then then you're getting all the re rolls to hit for them. But even then, if um, like mine's a um, made up chapter, so I have the what is the reroll one wound and one hit roll. Yeah. Um, which they've changed now, but um, but so not even taking the chapter master, like being able to have that unit, you know, three quarters of the way down the board, uh, pushing at the start of the game on the opponent's objective, and then being able to reroll. Uh, Reroll once to hit, reroll once to wound, and being able to reroll an extra hit and an extra wound. Yeah. Um, that was just very nice. Yeah. But you do. You do. You do have to. Your headquarters are built around them. Then. Yeah, I think that's the way they work best because then they can actually do out damage. Um, faces and bases. Uh, I almost achieved my life goal fully. Yeah, nice man. 500 points of undead and, and characters. And then a Pelennor Fields box. Nice. Dude, I love the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. I don't play it enough. Um, it is absolutely awesome. I'll end, I'll probably actually do some painting and some work on some stuff for it on stream as well. So, but yeah, no, it's a, definitely a great game. I think it's one of GW's best systems, to be honest. Um, but yeah. So, how have you been finding, like, uh, Kill Team and, uh, Warcry going, Steve? Um, I haven't really gotten that many games in recently, but, um, I think people are getting sick of the continuous expansion books. Um, because <laughs> I think that, that, that's the thing. Like, people, people go, oh, okay, it's a quick and easy game to get into, it's not that, uh, it's not that expensive to get into. And then it's like, okay, uh, from the base game, my simple squad of five is now crap because you're bringing in these big guys and these Terminators and all these other things. Yep. Um, so, you know, I think... I think they really need to um, think about 
having a game where they just don't do that with the expansions and they just allow it like especially a small game they just allow it to be this base game yeah and um you know like warcry they're bringing out all the different uh all the different teams and that now in in their box sets and i think you know um letting people go and just buy those box sets for people who are going to want to collect multiple teams and paint multiple different types of models they will do that yeah uh, they don't they don't need to put the expansion out and i don't think that it really has the competitive following that 40k does so you know i don't think that i don't know i may be wrong i mean i don't i don't have access to you know their financial statements but i yeah. um i don't think that they're really going to be making the big bucks from those small games Hmm. and all those expansion books and everything. Yeah. All right, Faces and Bases, good luck. Uh, catch us soon, my man. Um, yeah, there will be, hopefully, there's a sub button next time. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but, yeah, no, hopefully catch you next time, my man. Um, yeah, sorry to cut you off, Steve. Oh, no, no. That, yeah, I, I just think that... Uh, the casual gamers who I think that it's supposed to be marketed towards uh, got sick of it. Yeah. Because of that, and I think that the um, the more competitive gamers that wanted that stuff um, aren't really playing it as much as what they are for 40k anyway. So mm. I, I think that that's that's the problem. I like, like you see it in all games where they do uh, updates, edition updates, and everything. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons and all those role-playing games. You see it, you know. They're they're always chasing what the what the people want because you know they're going to sell more. But you know, the people who are happy with it aren't the ones making the noise. Yeah. So, um, and then those people end up being unhappy with it. So, <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, it's a it's a revolving door, isn't it? You know, it's just you just got to stick in and you know I, I think it also comes down to having a conversation before the game particularly around kill team uh you know saying right i've only got the base set like can we just stick with the basic rules and just go and work from there and use fresh teams and things like that can help mitigate those style of things oh yeah um and there's people you can do that with i, I think that um the problem is that um You'll be able to do that with, you know, your core uh, friends that you, you play with and so forth. I just think that once you start getting to, to leagues at stores, there's there's an expectation from players that they're going to be able to use every bit of rule that there is that's out there. And the moment you limit it, you have people going, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to play in that league because, you know, I can't, I can't bring my one thing that I want to bring that's super hot. Yeah. Um, so, you know... It's it it stuck for a um for a number of reasons, but mostly it comes down to you know players are picky. <laughs> yes, players want to play what they want to play with. I, I definitely feel that um and and can get that to a certain point. I, I think it's also dependent on the environment that you've got the league in. Because if it's like at one of like take if they actually did one for a jolt league, right? And how the 40k ones run, where over time you build up points and you're able to get access to expansions and all that kind of stuff. If you get it to where, okay, cool, one, you know, first couple of weeks is just the base stuff, and then after that you change it to being the, um, you know, you could add the elites expansion first, and then do two weeks with that in there, um, and go from there. I. Th yeah. I I think that would work a fair bit better for league play because then it's like, well, at some point you're going to be able to play with your HQ. At some point you're going to be able to play with your elite. You've just got to stick it out to start with and help newer players come in. Well, the thing is, what they did do with the rules, though, was they basically said, um, so uh, Commanders, for example, you had the base scenarios in the original book and they then said, here's these scenarios, and these scenarios are the ones where you can say, where it says you can bring a commander or whatever. These scenarios are such that you have to, like, you have to both agree that you're going to play that scenario. But um, that's 
not what was happening in a lot of places. What was happening in a lot of places was that they were saying, okay, this is the scenario, and they were, picked, they were saying it was a scenario out of the commander's book because they, they, had, they had people who were saying they wanted to play commanders. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you get that um, flexibility in the rules that they've got, but, uh, you know, a store can run whatever they want. And if their store has people who are saying they want to play with their commanders, um, and they don't want to turn up to a table and be told they can't use their commander because the other guy says they're not wanting to play that, then, you know, stores are trying to get people in. So yeah, they're ag they're they're again chasing chasing what the players say they want to want to do. Yeah, which I but think Kill Team. Yeah, no, you go. Kill Team also has that campaign rules where it's it's like Necromunda, it's like Blood Bowl, like you know you play two games, you lose two games, you're really far behind. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, it's interesting in that regard. I think being able to... Like, I'm not sure how it is for um, Kill Team, but I know at least for Crusade for 40k that there's the limiting factor in terms of that, like, you, can, you both have to play the same power level... Um, you know, you each spend requisition differently, but your point, your power level stays the same for your games. Um, whilst you might run different things, you're on that even footing. Yeah. So the problem is that you end up with the the way the points go with kill team. You have that same thing, but I suppose in the crusade, you, you've got 40k, which is a system where you know one person might bring some big beefy guys anyway. But you you already know that's potentially going to happen. You already know that that's there. Yeah. Whereas, what happens with the kill team after the, you know, after the first round, even you get you get the right kills in, you get the right rolls at the end, um, you can have someone level up, and although it costs more for them then to put into your team, the problem is, if you have one leveled up player that's like say leveled up twice or something, and the other guy has none because he just hasn't, you know, won the scenarios and he hasn't rolled very well, then that one beefed up guy takes out so many people. Yeah, right. Mm. It'd be like, there's got to be a way to, at least in terms of league play, to be able to go and understand that there are roles and, and that you can score that, but also like you can write mitigating rules to that, that you can go, well, okay, if you haven't got, say, uh, one of your dudes up to level two by your know, round two or round three, um, depending on how it's how it ends up working, um, then you know you automatically get a dude up to level two. Yeah, some sort of handicap system would be good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's just the way my mind works from my experience of running leagues and things like that. So um, it's just yeah, just my thoughts. But yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a continual problem of trying to trying to balance a game which is inherently unbalanced. Yes. And, and you know we find that across, you know, forty k. We find that across Sigma. We find it across almost all games. There's always going to be some point of contention that it's not um, balanced. Well, I was speaking the other day, and um, so the modern uh, magic. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of cards at the moment that everyone says they want banned, but they're not banned yet, and um, everyone says they want them banned, but everyone's bringing them because they're the they're the winning cards yeah. right now. And so you, you you end up with that that meta game of everyone plays the same similar list, a similar deck for Magic, and everyone says that you know they don't. <laughs> it's not as much fun that they don't like it, and they're a part of the problem. Bad. But you're like, well, how about you all agree to just not bring it <laughs> for this this night? And then, um, yeah, I, I got told, oh, yeah, but if they all agree, if, if they all agree to it, half of them would actually not do it. They'd bring the card. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it is what it is. Like, magic's very interesting in terms of that. Like, at least Wizards does a good effort um, monitoring, you know, what's being played heavily, what's not, 
all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but it takes it takes time to turn around and ban the card, and you're not going to do it willy nilly. You 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 really do need to go. Yeah, no, it is actually a real problem, and so it's not just it's not just going to happen overnight. Yeah. Um, and that that's the problem. The, you know, they they bring in that card, and it seems super powerful, and then they don't actually um, realize it um, until say the first tournament. But then it's like, was that just a fluke? Yeah, they wait for a consistency um, yeah. where it's consistently doing well. And I think, you know, that's something that's good that, you know, they notice and pick up trends rather than just going, oh, yeah, this is absolutely broken. The problem is, is when they do um, day one bans for new sets. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like you literally just released a card and everyone's gotten gassed up over it. And then you go, yeah, nah, this is banned. Like, it is what it is. Oh, so yeah, no. But oh, yeah, no. I'm realizing that I shouldn't put the accoutrements onto these guys, like the bells and shit. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm on my death watch now. I'm, I'm in terms of the the last veteran, so I'm just doing a third, highly watered down coat of crack stone for the under cloak just to get it nice and smooth yeah but yeah um i'll just swap these little guys together i'll post where i'm at in discord because i'm probably gonna have to stop shortly no nah, it's all good um the um the thing is so the because they're they're, they're beasts and I, I like to have some sort of names for my guys um, at least for in my head yeah um, I've got the uh, the two Saigas and the two Gorgons uh, their fur is painted different colours yeah and so I've painted I'm, I'm, I'm going to try this I'm painting it I'm going to eventually get it fairly bright for the fur um you know, like those animals that have bright colour fur or something, and like as a, as a warning in nature. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've done it so that um, one of the gorgons, the guy that has you know the the slashing blades, mm. um, he's going to have yellow fur, and I'm calling him Wolverine. The other gorgon, who instead of having the the and I'm not talking about the blades that are like built into the arms. I'm talking about the the, the fist and blades. He's just got the claws mm -hmm. um, in the build, and he's um he's going to be called Beast. Then the Saigor, I've got one of them which has the single horn, mm -hmm. and you know, they're all sort of Cyclops type looking things. Um, that's going to be Cyclops. Yep. And the the other ones. So his fur is red, and the other one's fur is green, and he's going to be Banshee. So they're all they're basically I'm naming all these guys after X Men, yeah, like Marvel things. <laughs> I, I picked up on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was. Oh. Um. Castle Forty K holding this. No, where is holding this? Ah, uh, just um, chuck it up in general gaming. I'll add um, some AOS channels then. When oh, I get a chance. So. But yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm loving getting through these Death Watch. It's, uh, it's one of those things. I've had them sitting in cases for ages. And just haven't gotten to them. And then this year I've um, smashed through most of them. Yeah, nice. They're looking good. Yeah, so I've just started getting uh, the base coats on. Um, so I did the, the Xenophil highlights for the, the, the priming. Mm -hmm. And um, I've just got to get the base coats on everything and then do my highlights. Fuck, there's a load of... Probably should not swear on stream. Oh, no, it's um, fine. I've got... <laughs> <laughs> the mature content thing up, so I don't, I don't care. Um, there's a lot of skulls. <laughs> there's a lot of tiny skulls all over them. Yep. I, I've, I've been putting together my Indominus stuff, and it's like, 
Oh yeah, I've got this little hex thing to go in this slot, and another one to go in this slot. It's like, oh, come on, seriously? You don't need that many. Uh, but it is what it is, I suppose. But yeah. Have you been um, playing much D&D recently? Well, I run a campaign every Wednesday, so, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we, just, we just switched over to Discord for the pandemic. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I, I've i had setups before for using some of the virtual tabletops and stuff like this. Um, but the problem I find with that is everyone needs to, like, invest the time into learning how to use it for it to be really functional. So I generally just have the virtual tabletop uh, open at my end and I will stream the screen so that they can see where the where the positioning is. Yep. Because um, you can do a lot with Dear to the Mind, but there's some stuff where, you know, D&D is a tactical uh, sort of tabletop war game in some aspects mm -hmm. because your positioning is important for spell distances and shit like that. Yeah, and combat as well. That cape's looking good, dude. Oh, cheers. It's, um... Yeah, that, that, that's, it's, like, obviously you get your highlights and stuff too, but that's smooth. Yeah. So that's, that's what the, um... If it get, decides to... I'll pull the shield off. That's what the cape should look like. If it, um, once it's fully finished. At least on the bottom, on the underneath, and then the back. Is, um, like that. Oh yeah. So yeah, they uh, come up quite nice, and I I've always enjoyed doing, um, like, oh, what's the word for it? Beige or cream as the under underside, um, rather than the outside. Like I I've got my grey knights that are red, and then I do the the robes. I f oh gosh, I, I should pull one of them out. I oh, mean. I did think about that with the capes for so the desert lions. So, for the most part, their capes are yellow. Yeah. And I was thinking, I was thinking about doing the under red, like a bright red. But um, yeah, I, I was just when I started doing them, I was just not going to do that. But um, I did start doing all the gold trim for the Admech capes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just trying to find it. I've got it here. Here we go. Alright, so, is it going to be on you? No, it's going to be the next one. Of course it's down the bottom of my 720. And then we put all that foam back in. Alright. So this is a Grey Knight Librarian that I did up years ago, back in, uh, it would have been 7th edition for a list I was running. But... I just did cream for the cloak on this one, but I did purple accents. And so that's crack stone. Yeah. So. But yeah, that came up really nice. I was really happy with how this guy came up. And that's this is the new plastic kit as well of the Terminator Dread. Uh, Terminator uh, Librarian, I should say. Yeah. Which, oh, I'm so glad that they did that because the resin one was shocking. But yeah, no. I've I've got a bunch of Grey Knights sitting there. I'm able to actually house them in cases now because I got my new case yesterday. <laughs> so. <laughs> Man. So, i a ridiculous number of cases. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've got I'm starting to get to a ridiculous amount as well, but I think I'm at the point where I've got all the carry cases for like games and stuff I need. So Battle Foam actually do um, office boxes that you can actually fit their foam trays into. So I'll just be getting those from now on, and just the foam trays that I want. Office boxes? You mean like archive type boxes? Yeah. Oh yeah. So they they do flat pack versions of those. Um, I suppose it's, 
I mean, that would be good. Like if they have a, you know, an archive box that fits within a bigger case. And so you just swap out the archive boxes for a bigger plastic case that you take with you for a particular army. Yeah. That could be one way of doing it. I think for me, because... Oh, no, go. No, no, you go. I was going to say, I, like, I've got the Pac 720, which is kind of a, a middle size case. Got a Pac Plus, which is a small add-on. And then the Pac 1520 holds, like, almost 22 inches of foam. So that's going to be, like, my main one now, my main case. And the, the beauty about it is that it's got wheels on it. And so I can just roll it everywhere instead of carrying it. And because of the way that they're designed... Uh, the cam isn't mirrored, Nefi. It's actually uh, flipped. So the way you're looking at it, my hands are down the bottom as I'm looking at it. So you're looking at what I'm doing uh, in the correct view because other guys will have it in reverse as I will show you by doing this quickly. They'll have it like that. Whereas I have it the other way because I just think it's a lot easier because then I can just hold it up like that and you're actually getting the right look of it uh, on my on your end as well as my end so I don't have to flip stuff around to show you. It's, it's the POV view. Yes. <laughs> it is the, my point of view view. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, I don't see many, many, uh, hobby streamers doing it this way, but you know, it, it works quite nicely, I find. Cause especially when you try and understand what brush strokes I'm doing or what piece I'm trying to get at, more than likely if I have to look at it, you guys are having to look at where I'm lo looking as well. So that helps. So hope that makes sense for you, man. But yeah. So yeah, no. So, I, what were you gonna say about cases, Steve? Um, I'm just gonna post in the in the um, as a general gaming. Um, yeah. So I have a um, a built-in robe in my hobby room. Yeah. And uh, one side is basically full of gaming mats uh, for various games. But, yep. Uh, one one half um, is of cases and so these cases are like too deep and such but i'll, I'll post them in the discord yeah so see because yeah. like i'm i'm at the point of where i go oh you know if i'm going to do anything else i'm going to have to get rid of a game and you know so, some of the stuff up the top is all batman stuff that i haven't played in ages but um yeah i just haven't gotten rid of it yeah Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Mine's, <laughs> mine's quite similar. Um, I've actually got a built-in wardrobe as well in mine. The thing is, I just changed my room around. So this pile of stuff that's on my right-hand shoulder, that used to just be storage boxes. Um, yeah. So I changed that out, put them in the cupboard and had the open um, standing, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, shelving sitting there that i've got like my yeah. magic decks and hobby extra hobby stuff on and i'm able to put my project box on top of it and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff so that's just the that's just the walking robe for my war gaming armies i suppose yeah um in my hobby room that's not including the front room stuff that uh like is the gaming room that has all my D D miniatures on shelves and everything <laughs> so. yeah right yeah, no. The the room I'm streaming in is my hobby room, so it's pretty much I've got on this side of the room is my hobby stuff, on the other side that's past the camera is all my gaming, my PC gaming. Yeah. Um Nefi, yeah, no, that's fine, man. The um Death Watch shoulders are for the uh left arms. So if you look at this dude if I put him around the correct way. So they are on the left, but they do seem like they're on the right for your view. So, but yeah, no. Hope you guys are having a good day so far. Thanks for joining me on this Saturday morning. We got uh, game on Steve with us in Discord, um, having a chat and doing some hobby. Um, so yeah.
What have you got for your shelving for your D&D minis, Steve? Um, mostly I just bought, uh, you know, the box shelving, the cheap stuff that you can get from, like, your reject shop and that stuff like that? Yep. Um, because there's so much. Um, I've got a bunch of that for the front room, which sort of goes down two sides and even, uh, I suppose, the back of the room in some aspect. Um, and that's... That's full of board games and the D&D miniatures. I then have next to that, I don't know, 20 tubs of terrain. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, I've, I've got my uh, t- my terrain and my gaming board are actually in my understair storage. So I think I've got like four plastic tubs worth of terrain and my gaming table. Yeah. So my gaming table that I, I use... I dreaming about wanting a proper gaming table but the gaming table I've got is an Ikea uh, dining table that goes from essentially six foot by like three and a half to nine foot by three and a half yeah 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 nice I actually um I think it was for my birthday and Christmas a couple of years back my dad's in a carpentry so he actually um built one for me that's uh it's got a lip on it and it's oh gosh it's eight foot by four foot but it's split into two four foot by four foot sections yeah and so it's actually using um the uh toggle latches onto the on the sides to actually pull it together and so yeah that's that's my gaming table and it's got plenty enough room on there on each side to the extra space and uh you can put dead models or you can put streaming gear all different stuff on there so but yeah yeah Yeah. sorry that it's not the only unfortunate thing is it's not six foot wide it's not four foot wide yeah yeah uh, Nephi, yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Um, if you jump in to the Discord, I'd love to see some photos, man. Um, we had one of the other guys, uh, Faces and Bases, earlier. He jumped in the Discord and showed some photos of his uh, librarian that he's been working on. So, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, a place to chuck up some works in progress. For me, I'm working on the basing for the Death Watch, my Death Watch, and... Um, and uh, yeah, just working on the last dude for the for the dude. squad. That's some awesome tartan work from Faces and Bases. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That was uh, insane. I saw that and I was <laughs> like, "You did that much detail on the smaller inner robes? What the heck?" Jesus. That that is awesome. That like, man, that I don't know whether I'd even bother trying that. And it's so subtle as well. It's not um, crazy bright or you know crazy in your face either. Like you could you could be playing a whole game and miss that by looking just from the tabletop. Yeah. So no, and he's doing that. Um, I think he was saying he's doing that as commission work. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah. How, are you doing any uh, additional converting to your uh, Iron Hands, Nephi? Are you adding Bionics? Are you, you know, just getting any conversion kits? Getting um, Forge World Shoulder Pads, etc.? So I'm just getting the Retributor Armor Gold done on this Storm Shield, which is probably one of the most tedious parts of painting the these Death Watch guys has been is the uh, is painting these shields. All the other parts I have no problem with. It's the shields that just have so much detail. It's just crazy insane. But yeah.
So, Steve, you were saying that you added the new um, jump pack guys to your ad mech. Have you added any of the other new stuff to them? Um, I've got a, so I've got a box of the um, mechanical dogs or mechanical horses, whatever you want to call them, the sulfur hounds. Yep. Um, I haven't put them together yet. Um, I'm probably going to... Uh, I have another box on order, um, but I'm probably going to put one box in one build and the other box in the other build and... You know, I, I I don't really have an idea on where to fit them in a list. I just um, like the idea of robotic dogs or horses that people ride around on. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting add to the ad mech army. It makes sense. Um, they used to have something like it, though. I can't remember what it was or when it was. Um, well, I know the Death Corps of Creed used to have mechanical horses. That might um, before they went out of production. Yeah, cool, Neefy. That's awesome, man. Um, if you want to chuck some photos up on the Discord, hit exclamation mark Discord or post up the Discord link and you can chuck photos up in the uh, 40k ho hobby channel. I'd love to see them. Just being a bit of a annoying piece. Oh, it's so annoying. It's it's right behind the arms and in the back of it there's the skulls hanging down in front of it and everything, so Yeah, right. Oh. Alright, I think these bases are actually Yeah, these bases are dry. So now we're gonna go with some dry brush action. And I'm going to need some more pep towel. <laughs> I told a mate of mine once um, uh, when I was looking at um, getting into painting and stuff like this. And um, he's like, oh, I never really know, like, how do you tell a good paint job from a bad? Like, obviously, like, it's really bad. You can tell. I said, you know what? You know how to piss off someone who spent ages painting their fucking wings? <laughs> Just turn around and goes, yeah, it looks really good. Probably just need a little bit more dry brushing over here, because <laughs> you can always say that. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a, it's obviously a personal preference. So every time I show him now uh, a new mini or whatever that I've painted, because uh, he plays D and D with me, so I, I painted some of the minis for D and D. He's he, he like, yeah, pretty, pretty good job. Just need a bit more dry brushing. <laughs> <laughs> he just takes like a bit that. of the piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's just like, oh, God. Yeah. Well, uh, the colour I'm using to go on top of the uh, Mournfang Brown is actually Balor Brown. I, I do a two-layer dry brush of Balor Brown, then followed by um, uh, your Shapti Bone for the bases. Yeah. So it has a nice nice effect um, on there as well. Yeah, awesome, Neefy. That's a great, uh, great thing to do, drilling out your bolter barrels. I don't do it often enough on my guys, I will say. But yeah. So. But yeah. I like that I've done the bases very similar to my um, Marines for my Death Watch. Because then I, I don't have a problem running them together as, uh, like, having the Marines in Death Watch units that I do at the moment. Well, that's what I did with my Admech. So, basically, and my, because, you know, Desert Lions. Um, and in the little lore that there is on them, there's basically a um, bit of a mix with the robots. Um, so... I painted them up the same colours, but because they're desert lions and because, you know, history with army and that, and ceremonial, I went with the khaki colour. So my admech and my space marines are all khaki. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, especially if you want to tie them in, that it's a nice way to do it, even if you want to do different colour schemes on the actual models themselves. Yeah. Which I, which I have seen done. But yeah. Alrighty. I'm actually really surprised how quick the air paint actually did dry. 
Mind you, I'm not that surprised considering it's 26 degrees in here. So. Can you dive in the window, dude? Yeah, I probably will. I've got my uh, a, a standing aircon unit sitting in here. Um, the problem is that this uh, this room in the house cops the sun pretty much all day. So. Yeah. Um, my one does as well. And um, with the pandemic, it was the room that I was in for working from home. And um, we got a big parasol that's outside that mm. I had to put up. To, to stop the sun like beaming down on my keyboard and my arm so it wouldn't get burnt. Yeah, um, right. But then like just how quickly the sun moves. I was having to move it <laughs> like three times during the morning. Oh dude. That's crazy. Alright, I am gonna crack a window. Uh and I'm gonna I put the ice packs for this thing in the uh freezer this morning, so I am gonna just be back in one second, guys. Alrighty, sorry about that guys. I just had to uh, turn on my dehumidifier and uh, get that going. I had to fill it up a bit as well. So where are we? There we go. All good. So hopefully, hopefully you can't hear it in the background. Um, but yeah. Alright, where is I up to? It's dry brushing. Oh, I, can't, I can't hear it, so. That's a good thing. Uh, it's on the lower setting, so. But yeah, no, like 
we don't have aircon in our place, so it's uh, a bit. It gets quite hot in summer. So, yeah, the muffin yeah, yeah. So my parents just bought us um, this dehumidifier, um, and it's actually working quite well. So we're gonna probably end up getting a second one. So we have one upstairs, one downstairs, and uh, it means we don't have to transport it here, there, and everywhere. But yeah. I dry brush the crap out of the paint not being on there. I think I did. Yeah, there we go. And of course I'd miss a spot. Cool. That's better. What are you doing for your bases on your uh, basement? Um, I picked up some of the um, rock that Jolt has at the moment. And so I've got um, I got one of each of those that I then put into tight spot. I've got to feel good about it. Um, and I think that I'm just going to use a mixture of the flock um, and a very um, uh, so I have this thing which I do with uh, super glue on bases sometimes mm -hmm. and mainly I do it when I want it to look like it's a um, I suppose maybe a lava type look or whatever but I think it will work well here for like an undergrowth so you get super glue you and you get the um, what's the insta zap type stuff? The beds, I forget what it is. Um, oh, the um, accelerant. Yeah. Oh, it's baking pa baking soda. So I, I just use the cheap uh, version. So you get baking soda that you mix with water. It basically does the same sort of thing. It hardens it really quickly. You just don't have the control necessarily as you do with accelerant or whatever. Mm. Um, so I'll put super glue down and just like really roughly so that it, so the flat base just gets a, a bit of a texture on it that's um, uneven and I'll spray the baking soda water mix so that it basically then sets it and it doesn't just like unlike accelerant which will sort of set it as it's there it also has a chemical reaction where it sometimes like just shifts it about so it gives it a this uneven finish and then I'm just going to do a, a brown muddy paint on that and then just put clock on it and um, some of those little flower things on all the different places. Yeah. It's just all going to be. It's it's just gonna, all going to be like wildlands. Yeah. Nice. Um, that's an interesting take. Like, because I know there's been people like I don't use it personally, but they use like the texture paint to do something very similar. Um, I use texture paint, um, but I use it. I suppose more on my small teams and stuff where I, I want to have a specific look and I've seen the texture paint and I like the look of it yeah um, I wouldn't uh, for the for the amount of people that I've got in the Beastman army I wouldn't bother with like Strickland mud or what is it mushroom undergrowth because it's just way too expensive yeah um, but like uh, my kill to my Tyranids kill team I, I gave them all like heavily grassed bases um, and I actually just use Strickland mud on the base hmm. uh, it, like you know the, the, the cost and ease of using it for say 10 models um, compared to trying to you know get the super glue and not fuck up the super glue really <laughs> yeah um, it, it's so much easier um, but also some of the ones I've got um I've got some blood letters, which I use for D and D for like devil type characters. Yeah. And what was it? The Martian undergrowth. I think I used on that. 
um, one of the Martian things, which does a very crackling sort of red earth look. Yeah. Um, so like you know, if it has the look that I'm that I'm looking for and that I really like, I'll use it because I know I know what I'm going to get. But I do try out a lot of different basing techniques uh, from scratch. I, you know, I've even molded green stuff on a base um, to get a particular look. Yeah. I mean, I, I, um, I don't know if you know Green Stuff World. Yes. Yeah, so I have a few of their rollers. Yeah, I was about to say, do you have some of those? <laughs> yeah. Nice. What um, different patterns have you got for them? Um, mostly they're because of D&D uh, &D stuff. Um, so I've got cobblestones and uh, there's a wood grain one. Um, I do have what is like an, I suppose, an admic mechanical it, it it comes out like the um necromunda specific um ones yeah right yeah and yeah that's about all really yeah Secure. cool um they do have a lot of really good patterns but like unless you unless you're looking at a pattern that you want for a specific army or something um it's probably not worthwhile buying them but yeah i I put green stuff on a whole bunch of D and D miniatures that I wanted to be like looking like they were in tavern, so they're like the slingers. Yeah. And so then I then I rolled out the um, the wood grain one, so mm. you know it looked like they were on a you know, wooden tavern floor. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, I'm almost actually done these bases. I just need to do the second. Uh... Oh gosh, I hate it when it does this. Oh. And then pull you out. At least it's all coming in one piece. That is a nice big chunk. And I just got you shafty bone all over my fingers. <laughs> the thing that I have avoided buying um, for quite a while was so I've still got some left over. <laughs> That's um, is the the dry brush paints. Yeah, especially the Citadel. Because they're just there's the same as another color that exists, and um, you know if you just use proper dry brushing technique, you know, you, you whack you whack an old brush. And I, I I do the um you know the soft makeup brushes. Yes, that's kind of what that's that's what I use mostly. Yeah. Um, so you know, um, you get some wet paint, you throw it on the towel enough. But it works better than the dry brush paint. Um, yeah. Can, you use a specific dry brush brush, which I don't particularly like the uh, the Citadel ones. Yes, yeah, I've got one of the Citadel ones, and it goes okay, but they they fray really quickly. Whereas I'm using an I've I've actually swapped to using Army Painter ones uh, in the past year or so, and I found they're actually a lot more durable. They're a lot softer and brittle as well. Yeah. So, um, Neef, nice, man. Like, I've got 10 Assault Intercessors from Indominus that I'm looking to build up soon. So, uh, you might actually see me build those up on stream. We'll, we'll see how we go. Um, but, yeah, no, they're definitely... Uh, I, I'm looking forward to the multi-part kit is where I want to see them go next. Um, but a lot of the new Marine stuff has actually just been the push fit. Same with the Necrons. What are your thoughts on that, Steve? Um, you know, I get why they're probably doing it. Um, but I... I'm not a fan of push fits in general, because I... I find that the quality on them is sometimes lacking uh, for the drones. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, any of the push fits, I, I tend to cut off the nibs on that before I glue them in anything. Yep. Um, you know, I get why they're doing it. You know, it's going to take a long to push them together and not have to glue anything or whatever, but I, I, I just don't think that's what people come to Warhammer for. Yeah. 
it's also like you see a lot of the newer kits, um, particularly the stuff that was in Indominus or is in the like command box or the elite box or the recruit box, and it's actually just um, the push fit kits on their own for an exorbitant price. <laughs> So it's like you no, but... no go. Yeah, the the thing that gets me with that though, in terms of the the business model for it, is those push fit kits that they put into a starter box for a new edition or whatever. Um, you've only got the one option generally, and then by the time they bring out the the regular box, there's three or five other options, and generally the original push fit option is the worst so it's like <laughs> we, we're giving you the worst option to start with so you're going to have to buy something that's later yeah yeah um, that said I mean uh, though the a AZ Dark Imperium and that I don't think was push fit for the the big box I think it was push fit for the smaller like no no fear and stuff yeah I think they were because they'd um, started using conquest models um, Neef, yeah, yeah, that's good to hear, man, that you're able to convert up some, um, characters from the patrol, um, Death Watch patrol box. So. So, yeah. No, I don't, I think it's a bit interesting that they're still selling the command boxes, um, and all the, like, as their starter sets, yet they're doing the kits as the push fits still. Um... I don't know, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who just go, well, I may as well actually just get the, you know, Elite or the Command Edition for, that it has whatever they want in it, and then turn around the other models and get the money back rather than paying, you know, for a box of 10 Warriors with three Scarab Swarms, it's $77. And they're the push hit ones out of Indominus. So... I think that's the route I'll be going for at least doing my, uh, to expand the Necrons for me. Uh, the Necron, the Necron Underbox, I just wanted the terrain, the 3D terrain. Um, I, I didn't want either of the armies. Yeah. So, or either of the games, I should say. Um, and I was like, well, you know, the, the amount of terrain by itself, yeah, I'll buy it. Uh, someone's bound to probably want it in one of the local groups. But, you know, everyone was talking about the same thing. But I put them up on eBay, and I, I just looked at it and went, oh, well, this is the price the other box is going for. Put it up, and people were buying it. Yeah, right. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's definitely Funnily interesting. Enough, yeah, when I did my nights, um, so I've got uh, six nights, I think. One of them's, one of them's just a, a, a war plane. But I've got, they're all for, um, three blades. Yeah. It's not really for an army. It's just for, uh, Thunderbird and paint. So, because a lot of the three blades were, they, they didn't need the extra weapons, um, through. Mm. But I, I got a bunch of boxes on sale, and they were all the, whatever the one is that it has the, so I think the Warden box has the extra screw in it or whatever. Um. I, I looked at the prices people were trying to sell them on eBay, and I'm like, oh, fair enough. I'm going to put it up. And I was like, okay, I've gained half of that box price again back. Yeah. <laughs> like, and people, people, you know, there's a, what is it, 185 bucks for a box, and um, people are spending 90 bucks on just that extra weapon screw. Yeah. Um, Kratos Evolved, th thanks for the follow, my man. Really appreciate it. Um, Neef, yeah, um, the, the Necrons. Uh, yeah, look. Chuck them up, you know, we're talking about, you know, secondhand sales at the moment, you know, and there's definitely a lot of Facebook pages of that out there. It just depends on your local area and, you know, I'm sure there's going to be new Necron players that are looking for the newer stuff uh, for a bit cheaper. So you'll definitely probably be able to get your money back, man, for sure. Like, I mean, that's how I started up my Necron army is I've got two halves of Indominus. One of my mates was like, on the night that we um, got them, he was like, I'm not going to use the Necrons, you know? And I was like, oh, I'm thinking of starting Necrons. And he was like, do you want the Necrons? And I'm like, yeah. And I asked him how much. He was like, 100 bucks. And I'm like, done. 
So, and that was for an entire second half of Indominus. So that was a lot of stuff. But that's, uh, that's going to be my Christmas building. I'm going to build that as I'm away for Christmas. Is build up all my Necrons. Right, cool. Where are you getting to? Um, so I'm, I've got to head to both sides of the family for Christmas. Okay. So heading down to the country near the Victorian border for Christmas and then up into the Illawarra for uh, New Year's. Oh, yeah. So that'll be, that'll be good just to get away for a bit and get out of Canberra because we haven't been able to do that most of the year. Kratos, uh, best way to start, man. Um, priming, you know, as uh, Neef has said, yeah. Um, what are you, what are you working on, man? I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. Um, just fire them on in, like, you, you know, what are you working on to start with? Hmm. No, he's, he's from what I gather. Yeah, cool. So the assault and assisted. Um, I'd say start just by, yeah, ultramarines. That's a that's a good place to start. Blues, blues actually quite an easy color to paint. Um. Also, if you prime with the McCraggy. Yeah, the McCragg blue prime would be uh, save you some time there. Um. Oh, what what tips? Um, look, just start out small, man. Take your time. Don't, don't rush, would be my biggest tip to you. Um, find other people around you to help learn as well, like, you know, find other streamers, uh, like, that are similar to myself that are happy to answer questions and see how they paint, um, and their methods. Sure, they might be quite well advanced, but, you know, they'll be able to share and distill down what they're doing and... Put some in some easy uh, starting steps for you. Um, in terms of my approach, uh, I'd suggest just starting with base coats. Um, just get solid colors down on the areas you want them to be, and yeah, get them done on all your dudes first, and then you can start learning other stuff from there. Would be the my suggested method of where to start. I think the big thing that It's just painting anything, it's just painting houses as well. Um, what, they, what they don't think about is that you're trying to let the paint flow onto the model. And so people will dip the brush in and then just keep on trying to, because there's still, there's still glue on that paintbrush, keep on trying to streak it. And you end up with the streaks there. Mm. Like, you, you're probably better off like putting more paint on than what you think on the brush to start with and just you know wipe it off a bit and you can see what scott's doing at the moment so i'm now actually watching you i've stopped painting as well yeah um you can see that like there seems to be like a lot of wet going onto the onto the model and, and that's kind of what you want like don't try and like get every bit of paint out of that brush it needs to it needs to flow when you're doing it otherwise that, that's where you end up like yeah, you ruin the bristles and stuff like this that you also get them flicking about. Um, you know, I would say um, if you're just into painting as well and you, you, you're really concerned about, you know, having bought, what was it, the the um, Assault Intercessors, you know, you just get one of those get one of those small boxes or something that's uh, the three-man kit, like 25 bucks or whatever, and just try something on there and... Once you've got something you're kind of happy with, do it. And the thing is, you're going to get better at painting the more you do it. So you don't expect much at the beginning. Yeah. It's definitely like you learn more as you go. I remember when I started painting, I, I can probably pull out a model um, out of one of my cases to show you. And they would compare nowhere near the, the level of painting that I'm able <laughs> to attain now. Um, so. Good it's it's you know it's a learning process it takes time be patient with yourself don't expect to you know be come out firing on all cylinders and be amazing from the get-go um 
just pace yourself and, you know, just be happy with the results that you do get. And over time, you'll get better. It's just, you know, it's that practice. Dude, I have some old D&D models that I painted with literally craft acrylic paints. Oh, gosh. I refuse, I refuse to strip them and repaint them because it's just this thing where you go, look, that is the, the, the crappy, bad, oh, look, I know it's not right. I know they say buy these expensive paints, but, you know, I just want to get some colors on some D&D models that are looking gray. Yeah. And they're not expensive models, but, you know. Um, I would say don't ever feel like you need to go back and repaint something that you started off with. It, it's like great to be able to look at and be like, well, you know, that's where I was. Um, even as little as a year ago, in a year you'll be improved. Mm, 100%. It, it's just, you know, you just got to stick at it, paint regularly, um, and just take your time and just don't be too harsh on yourself. So. Nephi says about painting in lines that he finds it easier painting in parts. Yes. I, I don't paint in part I don't paint in parts a lot because I I paint so much um, general stuff that it's kinda of like that sort of hidden, you know, D and D model it's it's just on the table and it, it, it looks better than a lot of other stuff. I will for say characters and stuff. But, you know, it, when you're starting off I'd probably take the principle of, you know, if, if you can't see it when you look around the model and it's hidden, don't worry about it too much. Yeah, I agree with that. Like you, you, would, you, you could spend ages trying to get under an armpit or something and you'll end up stuffing up and then you'll try and correct it and you'll end up stuffing up. So just like what, if you get to a stage where you think it looks okay from about a foot away sitting on a table and you're playing a game, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's a great start. It's come on the table as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. What I'll, I'll, I'll actually swap to my full face cam and I'll show you a trick that I do. Um, where is it? We need to go there. So, if you're able to take a model, say, for example, this Grey Knight Librarian. If you hold it out and, you know, at full arm's length, so you can see if I do it this way. And you're happy with how that looks. Great. It's what you want. You know, you don't need to go any any much more than that. Like, you can see what I'm doing here with the with the models in front of me. Like, I'm doing them in parts and it's a bit easier. But if you, you, you know, you've kind of got that, as Steve was saying, one foot or, you know, that three foot rule for your arm length. And you're seeing how that comes up. If you're happy with that, then you're, you're good. At least in my opinion, um, in how I do, how I painted initially i should say yeah I'd, I'd also say that there are a lot of people that just don't paint their arm so i mean and you know that's the way they want to play that's the way they want to play but um i like color on the table so if you're if you're painting your army um you know i'm, I'm never going to tell someone i'm playing against especially if they started that like oh you know oh you need to go back and restrip that and paint it again because that looks crap like, you've, you've got colour on the table. That's a lot better than a lot of people. Yeah. It's always better to have... You know, I've, I've come around to the idea of playing with fully painted armies than not. Um, so, and, and you know, that's a carryover from me previously being a tournament player. Um, but just also in general, I just prefer how uh, painted models look on the table as well. So... But yeah. So yeah, if you've got any other questions, Kratos, shoot them in. You know, if you want recommendations, if you you need suggestions, um, if you hit exclamation mark Discord as well, um, it should bring up a link to my Discord uh, server where you'll be able to jump in. You'll be able to see Game on Steve, who's with us right now. Um, we've got faces and bases as well posting in there. Um, You'll be able to, you know, see what other people do as well, uh, and ask for tips. And you can, you, know, you can join in the voice channels and have painting sessions with them and share what you're doing uh, there as well. So yeah, it's definitely, you know, if you're wanting to get into somewhere where there's going to be guys that can are willing to help out, um, jump in there, dude. A hundred percent recommend. Um, and I'm more than happy to jump in there with you. And you know, if you want to jump on stream and do a learn to paint, 
one for you as well. Um, you know, I'd be happy to do that as well. Um, So, I'd probably be the one to answer the question a bit more. Oh, go for it, Steve. <laughs> go for it. Um, so, it depends, so, in terms of gaming, it depends on what you're really after. I mean, 40k is, you know, a couple of hours of playing a big army. Um, it plays a certain way. Kill Team is a skirmish game. If you've played any other skirmish games, um, they, they do alternating moves. And so, it's, it's faster or quicker. It's about going, okay, I've got 30 minutes, maybe 45 or something, let's whack out a game. Or I've got a couple of hours, but I want to play a whole bunch of games. And Kill Team gives you, gives you an opportunity, if you're looking in the painting, to you know, buy those small boxes of teams and paint them up a whole bunch differently and, and build up those skills sort of really quickly. Like, you get used to, okay, I'm, I'm going to go paint these pyramids and they're going to be you know, mostly a bony type color. Um, I'm going to go paint, you know, the Death Watch kill team, and you know they're really dark. Um, it gives you that opportunity from a hobby aspect to do. I mean, sure, you could do it with just random models anyway, um, but it does it does give you that aspect from a hobby aspect. But from a gaming aspect, it, it's a completely different game. So um, you could pick up Ultramarines or Space Marines because there's no chapter specific thing that really in Kill Team. And you could play them in Kill Team, and the way they play in 40k is so different that you might not like it. Um, you, I think Scott would agree. Best thing is it, if if you like the look of Ultramarines, go with Ultramarines. Mm. You know, um, start building what you're building. You know, if you get 500 points, you can play a small game fairly easily. Um, yeah. And plus, if you want to get into 40k, then I would probably say, like, in terms of uh, money, you, you want to start just gradually building that up. If you try and get into Kill Team, you can get into Kill Team straight away, and you're in there with one army. But um, you can get stuck in the trap of wanting to buy the other armies because they'll play differently. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I've got, I've got Tau. I've got Space Marines. I've got Death Watch. I've got... Um, Jeez, Dylan Coles, I've got, uh, uh, um, a Tyranids, I don't know, I've probably got a couple of other teams for Kill Team, and that's just because I've gone, I want to, I want to just paint up different things. Yeah, it's definitely a hard choice, Kratos, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, just, as Steve was saying, even, like, start out small, like, and I think Kill Team is the best way if you want to, you know, see what force, like, you don't want to commit to Ultra straight away. Play a bit of Kill Team, um, you know, and, you know, yes, they will play a bit differently, but, you know, if there are other guys in your local area and you're able to actually play games at the moment, have a chat with them, see if you can play with them, like, bring your dudes and, and actually play, like, a team game against some other people just so you can understand how the game works and, and you can go from there. Um... That's also another thing you could do. So, all right. So I think I have actually finished off three of these veterans. I'm just gonna pop their shields back on. Well, I think I've got all my base layers done, and I probably need to go. Oh, I need to pop that. I probably need to uh, look at putting on some layers next yeah nice I'll leave that probably for tomorrow yeah so easy steve um nice chatting scotty yeah no uh, thanks for joining us it's been great to have you go. on stream yeah it's easy it's easier to chat and flip my head around and look than it <laughs> if i'm hobbying myself yeah yeah for sure <laughs> nah it's too easy steve all right i'll catch you soon yeah okay see you mate see ya Alrighty, chat. Um, let's uh, let's get the music going back. We'll, we'll have that going in the background. Um, I probably have turned it right the way down.
unintentionally. There we go. We'll, we'll start from the next song. So yeah, that was, that was Steve who's one of the guys in my local area. Um, so yeah, and I'm gonna turn this down in my head so I can actually hear myself talk. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, uh, Nephi, what have you said, bud? Uh, yeah, 100% agree with you, Neef. Um, for me, my Marines are actually my own chapter as well. Um, everyone likes to call them Smurfs because they're blue. Um, but... You know, I, I sit there and I'm painting the, you know, and they're my own style. So definitely, um, you know, agree that, you know, you paint your own style. You paint what you like. Don't don't be hamstring yourself into painting something just because it's the go-to color scheme or it's what, um, you know, what Games Workshop have painted. Paint what you want to paint. Paint the colors you want to paint. Um, however, that being said, if you want to paint yellow or white to start with, uh, it is going to be tough. I, I will tell you that now. Um, but yeah, no, I just, you know, thanks to everyone for joining me so far this morning. Hope you guys are having a good time in uh, in chat and, you know, enjoying the stream. If you haven't already, uh, you know, and you're enjoying the content, um, you know, we've got a bunch of different avenues that we've got to engage with the community. You know, we've got the Discord. Uh, we've got here on the Twitch. I've also got a, a YouTube set up that I'll have a link to and we've also got my the Facebook page um, Which is which is always there um, Where I'm, I mainly post up when I'm going live on the on the Facebook page more than anything um, But yeah, no Hope you guys you know whether it's Yep yeah. All right, Kratos. Yeah, like just find people in your local area to um, play 40k with, um, and, and you know, as I was saying, ask if you can join in a team game. Like, find you know another Space Marine player who's willing to do that with you and help you out, uh, and just so you can understand how they play a bit better and go from there. Yeah, Nafi, 100%. They're, they're definitely tough. Thanks for the follow, dude. Really appreciate it. Or oh, man, I'm not sure. You know, I got caught, caught out for that the other week, but I've got to change that habit. But yeah. No, I definitely like white and yellow. Even some of the most experienced painters struggle with it. So don't, don't feel like you've got to try and... Uh, Go out and become a master within the space of two months, uh, Kratos. Take your time. It's the, the biggest thing I can suggest is take your time. But also, uh, Neef, did you build up the uh, patrol boxes Death Watch, or did you just do them as standard Marines for the combat patrol stuff you got? Because I'd love to hear your thoughts on um, that uh, that box itself. Okay, cool. So you just got them to be standard, standard Marines. How many of the um, Death Watch upgrade sprues came in the box? Because I haven't gotten one for myself as of yet. And I'm just tossing up whether I do or not.
Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's great value. Um, I do agree. Because um, you look at it. So the difference between the combat patrol boxes and kill team is that kill team is, as Steve was saying, it was that small amount of models, whereas the patrol boxes are five hundred point forces um, that you can pretty much pick up and you can make a combat patrol detachment to play in a game of 40k and they're around 500 points so for example the death watch one that we're discussing uh has got a unit of 10 intercessors uh a unit of three aggressors it's got uh a lieutenant and an apothecary and that works out to be around 500 points so it's more of that intro points level for 40k gives you a couple of units to work with um and see how they play on the table um but they are a bit more expensive than your start collecting boxes that they're phasing out or they're going to be at least Alrighty. So right now I'm just painting the rune fang steel over all the lead belcher that I'm working on. I'm just using one of my uh, smaller base coating brushes. And just getting the color down on here. So yeah. But they're going to be coming out with a bunch of different um, combat patrol boxes as well. Um, Kratos. So you don't have to necessarily just go with the, um, you know, the standard marine one that they'll end up bringing out. You can go with the Space Wolves or the Blood Angels one that they're going to be releasing soon. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, you don't have to use the certain parts that they'll include for them. Yeah, yeah, so there's no specific rule book for them to be used. They're, they're meant to be the new um, way to get into an army. They're meant to replace the start collectings. So... And then Nightbot just did his job. He just stopped a spammer. Which we love to see. We love to see Nightbot ban hammer some, uh, some bots. So. But yeah, no, it's, it's unfortunate that the, um... The upgrades proof of the Death Watch is just the the helmet and the um, breastplate are uh, just power armor ones. But, you know, I, I expected that there would have been two in that box set um, when I was talking with some of my local guys. Yeah, pretty much. They're just the new Star Collectings. So. And which actually give you a playable force, whereas some of the Star Collectings don't. But are a bit cheaper. So. Yeah. So if you ever, like Kratos, because I know you, you were saying you had the um, Assault Intercessors um, earlier. Like, if you wanted to get a friend in a 40k, or you wanted to build up, you know, your Marine Forces relatively slowly, but you want to add a variety of units instead of just grabbing a box of 10 dudes. The Recruit or the um, Elite Edition is a really good way to go.
So yeah. I, I tell you what guys, I'm looking forward to getting this Death Watch dude done. Because that'll be the last dude for the unit um, completed then. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, see, so Forge World do specific models that can be used in 40k, but all your mainline 40k stuff you can get through Games Workshop. Like, Forge World won't cu carry a lot of the new Primera stuff. Um, actually, most, if not all, they won't... Um, be able to help you out there but you know they're good for like some of your vehicle stuff or upgrades sprues things like that um you can get them there just be just be aware that it is forge world it is resin it's not um actual plastic so i would recommend just sticking with pro like main games workshop for all your stuff to start with and then go to forge world once you're in a bit better uh, and you know you got a better understanding of you know the game and how it plays uh, and what you're wanting to do with your force and where you're wanting to go um, so yeah no I definitely agree with Neef that it's a um, it is another can of worms so that's that's one that I would say uh, steer clear of for now Yeah, unless, Neef, you're in Australia, and then the prices are actually pretty comparable um, to what some of the uh, Games Workshop kits cost, um, to be honest. So... Alrighty, so I think that's most of the silver done. I've just got a couple of spots to go back over. Alright. Cool, so that's the shield. Once it decides to focus. And then there's the shoulder pad. There's still some colour I've got to do. I've got to do more metal on it. And some other colours here, there and everywhere. But... We'll keep it going. Um, at this point, you know, I, I'm gonna... Yes, it, it is, Neef. It is. <laughs> um, it, it does uh, border on highway robbery sometimes. <laughs> I, I will not uh, disagree with you on that. But I'm very, very lucky and very thankful that my local gaming store does 10% off. Um, so, you know, I do get to save a little bit of cash there. Um, they do 10% off all the G-Dubs kits. Um, so. Mm. Alright, I think what I'm going to do is whilst this guy dries, I'm going to actually glue that guy to his, to his feet. So I'm actually just going to pop over this side for a sec. Um, I'm going to hit this, and then I'm just going to grab the glue that I need, and I'll be back in a sec.
Alrighty. Let's get back into it, hey? I'm pretty sure it's going to be this one. Yeah. Cool. Um, and considering that's fallen back a bit, let's move that forward. And then... That being there. Um, so, if you... Depends on where you are in the world. Um, so, for me, we've got a store called Bunnings, which is like your Home Depot if you're in the States or... Uh, you know, I'm not sure about the UK. Um, cool. Yeah, so it's like like a Home Depot style of store. And so the light that I've got, if you... So it's this guy here. It's just a standard desk lamp. But the thing is, I got it so that I can actually change the colour on it. So you'll notice if I go to here... No, nope, wrong one. You'll see that as I change the lamp, it'll actually change the colour. And it's actually got warm light, cool light, and neutral light. Um, which is actually... You, you want to have... An, uh, LEDs are usually pretty good. Like, this is LED. Um, with neutral light um, is what you're wanting to, to do. Because then you're actually able to see clearly what the colour is going to look like. Um when you're painting and it's not going to be tainted by being under a fluorescent light or a normal blue light. So it's it's got both going simultaneously. So it fixes that problem there. Um, I am actually going to have to be back in a second again, guys. Sorry. Um, I need to actually clean out this, um, this tube that's for my glue. You probably can't see it there. Um... It's this little guy right here. I have to go uh, burn off the excess glue in there. So I'm going to leave the uh, music playing. Please stick around. Uh, I will be back in about a minute or two. Sorry about that, guys. I just had to... Uh, this is the problem with using the metal one, is that you need to uh, burn it off. So... Yeah. But yeah, no, lighting is super important, Kratos. I, I will... I will agree. But finding the right lighting is important. Um... Oh, goodness. I think this is an unclogged. I do have a spare one up here. But I'm not certain if the thing is clogged itself. Or not. Let's just see how this one goes. Nope. Alright, we're gonna have to do this the other the other way. Which isn't wait the, which isn't the way you should normally do this guys. I, I do not condone this method. I'm just doing it because I I want to right now. I wanna glue this guy. 
So, I need to use it without the nozzle. And I'm going to be very careful how much I apply. Um, cool. That's, that's about as much as I want. Just a small dob in there. And then he's nice and snug on there with his arms. Perfect. Cool. Yep, I agree with you, Neef. 100%. Don't buy the netlist. Buy and, buy and play with what you want to play with. As having been a tournament gamer myself, I can agree starting out it's always better to buy and play with what you want to play with and not what other people say is good. Um, because you're wanting to learn the game. You're wanting to have fun playing the game. You don't want to be hamstrung by only going, oh, I've got to play this one particular list and you're losing, you're losing, you lose because you don't understand how it actually works. Um, play with what you want to play and, you know, how you want to play. And, uh, yeah. Don't be too stressed if, um, you lose a bunch of games. Yeah, dude, super easy. So in your rule book, there'll be a, a compartment in there. If I can actually get to mine, I'll actually pull it out for you now. I'm not painting anything, so I don't have paint. So I can walk you through this, actually, if you'd like, um, on how to build a list. Let me just get to my massive new case. It's kind of back here. But, you know. Yeah, all right, cool. So we'll jump in a list building. All right. All right. So in this massive time of thing that you call a 40K rule book, um, your detachments for how you build your army are going to be on... They start on page 244. Um, so pretty much that runs through the basics of it. What you're really wanting to look at, though, is from 246 onwards. Yep, Battle Scribe's a nice tool as well. Um, so, when you're building a list, um, you'll see from page 248 to 250 is a whole bunch of detachments you can take. Now, the Combat Patrol box Neef was talking about builds at what's called the Patrol Detachment. So, I'll actually bring it up here so you can see what I'm referring to. So, hopefully this thing will decide to want to zoom in. So that's the patrol detachment there. I'm not sure how that reads. That reads upside down um, and backwards. So for it, um, are you talking about the the um, easy rules, Neef? Or are you talking about um, something else? Um, but yeah, Kratos, like each of these detachments that are in should be in your core rule book. Um, will tell you how to build a list and what you have to take. So in the patrol detachment, for example, you have to take a HQ and you have to take at least one troop. And then everything else you can take optional. So you can take an additional HQ, up to two additional troops, and then up to two elites, two fast attack, two heavy support, and two flyers. So each of those are different roles. So when you get a codex, like you, I think you said you've got the marine codex, um, you'll notice that each of them have a different battlefield role. If you look on page 247, it'll actually show you what the different roles are. So, a skull is generally your HQs. The sideways arrow is your troops. The elites is that um, Terminator Crux symbol. The fast attacks, the lightning bolt. Your flyers is the sword with wings. And then the heavy support is the uh, blast image. 
uh, they're generally what you're going to have your different units as. In your codex, you'll be able to see which of those are. Um, and then what you do is you, whatever upgrades they've got, what weapons, if you have to pay points for those, you pay points. Each unit does have its own points cost with it. Um, and from there, you build your list because each unit will have its points. And so say, for example, the patrol, uh, the combat patrol box for the Death Watch. No, nah, all good. All good, Kratos. Happy to help. Um, actually, the, the core rules in this, the ninth ed one's actually quite big. It's like maybe 50 to 80 pages neat, um, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, awesome. So you'll be able to see... Um, yeah, when you get it, you'll be able to see what the detachments are on those pages um, and be able to figure it out by just looking between the codex and your rule book and comparing what battlefield roles are what um for example the the combat patrol box that neef had bought as i was saying uh you you've got a lieutenant that's hq you've got a unit of 10 intercessors that's a troops choice you've got a unit of three aggressors that's an elite's choice and then you've got an apothecary that's also an elite's choice so, and that comes together to about 500 points. Um, because each of those units have its own points value. So yeah, that, that's the way you build a list. Uh, very easy, very simple. Um, and just write it by hand. Yes, Battle Scribe can help, but it can be a bit tricky to navigate initially. I, I'd recommend just start writing by hand. Um, and go from there, man. Like, at your local game store, if you've got a local gaming group, um, Facebook page or anything, you can ask guys there for help to, you know, understand how to build lists as well. Feel free to jump in the Discord as well and, and, you know, post up, I think I've got a list building section on there or a gaming section, uh, in there. Um, where am I looking? Uh, yeah, I've got a Warhammer 40k gaming channel, so you can post up for help on lists there. You know, we've got Steven Faces and Bases on there. Who are who are ab quite willing and able to help as well. Um, so yeah, no, dude, more than happy to help. Um, you know, even myself, if I see it, I'll jump in and I'll chime in and I'll tell you. Um, you know, we're all in this hobby together. We're all here to help each other, uh, especially considering you're starting out. Yep, yep. The Warhammer community side have the FAQs as well, um, which is always good to keep an eye on. All right. So, this guy's probably dry. And so, that's him. That's him done. Fully completed that guy, and I finished him last stream. So, we've just got to finish this last dude to finish the unit. The feet are all, his face is already done. So the rest of the model is actually lagging behind at this point. So we're going to go back to the goal. And we're going to keep on going. Um, what I'll do for you, um, Kratos, is I'll put into chat, um, the Discord link, so you can, so that's my Discord server, um, if you jump in there, you'll be able to see guys like Steve that we were talking to, um, you know, faces and bases on there now as well, um, jump in there, man, I'll happily help where I can. So, but yeah, all right, let's get the second part of the goal done. Awesome, Kratos, glad to hear that, dude.
Now, not really caring too much if the gold's a bit rough over here, because I am having to, I will have to touch up the silver anyway. But yeah, so if you got any questions, there's a. Yeah, they did FAQ that now, uh, which is good. Like, it should have always been that way, I reckon, and they just misprinted it. But, yeah, the, the Chief Apothecary is, uh, is a bit crazy for Marines. Uh, in my opinion, Neef, I, I, sent, I seem to always be taking one in my lists. And hardly using him. Um, just because of where he's placed. But, no, the, the Chief Apothecary is awesome for the points that he is. I think, Neef, I'm not sure if you'd know this most bu this busted combo. Um, you might be aware of it, you might not. Um, it's something some of my local guys broke day one uh, with the Chief Apothecary, is the ATVs with the Chief Apothecary. Because um, if you look on their keyword, they are bikes. They aren't vehicles. So, they're, um, yeah. Pretty busted, I'd say. Hey, Alexandra, thanks for the follow. Really appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the stream. But yeah, no, this stream has been awesome. Just hanging out with you guys. We had Steve with us earlier, just having a chat. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Do you... Is there any particular reason why, Neve? Yeah, I did. I did see the leaks for the new Blood Angel Patrol. Um, that it's, I think it's got one of the new tanks or the new, one of the new, um, skimmers in it. Um, from memory. Yes, yes, because of that vehicle. At least I'm right in saying that it's got one of the vi new vehicles in it, I think. I'm not sure. You can probably confirm, Neef. But yeah, no, some of them are going to have ridiculously good value. I think it's going to be interesting to see the value of the, um, 
some of the older armies and see how they stand up in this new format for their star collecting star box. Yeah, that's fair, man. That's very fair. Um, I, I'm, I, I, for me, I've been playing, you know, since fifth edition. So when they brought in all the new Primera stuff, I've been quite skeptical to get into them, at least to start with. Now, not so much. Like I understand that they're a part of the game, and you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I do agree in, in terms of like ATVs being absolutely busted because of the Chief Apothecary. Um, they need to fix that um, where they just change um, the keyword on it so it doesn't have the bike keyword. And that'll be the fix. As long as it doesn't have the bike keyword, it can't be uh, abused. I think the easiest way to actually abuse it is in Dark Angels. Because you take once they get their supplement, um, you take a uh, yeah, yeah. Death Watch are awesome like that. Um, so, but yeah, no, I, I think that taking off the bike keyword from the ATV and changing it to like just having the atv keyword will fix that problem and i think they need to do it um but yeah the taking a deathwing a ap chief apothecary not deathwing sorry ravenwing chief apothecary would it is the the way to run busted atvs and whilst yes there is not a, a oh, i think there is a current option for it in the index um, yeah, they just need to FAQ the ATV to being, to not being a bike, which will fix the problem. Oh, all good Kratos, all good. Death Guard are the Chaos version, uh, Chaos, or Chaos Marines. So, but yeah, no, dude, don't stress. Um, feel, feel free to ask as many questions as you want here, man. Like, I'm happy to happy to answer, and I dare say Neef is as well, by looks. Um, but I, I won't make that assumption. But yeah, no, I'm just... For me, I'm trying to foster... A nice warm welcoming hobby streaming community to help you guys like yourself and have somewhere to go that you can ask these questions and, and, and you know ask for your advice and tips on getting into the game and things like that so which i don't think there is enough of um but there are a couple of other guys that i can definitely recommend in that regard as well so but yeah, thanks thanks for you know you guys hanging out and chatting and you know I really appreciate it. Um geez, it's already twelve thirty over here. That's crazy. And Siri just decided to want to do something for me. Not fun. Um So Alright. Yeah, jump off my phone and get back into it. Alright, I've still got to do the gold on this main Inquisition symbol in the center. So I need some more gold. But yeah, no, to, you know, considering you guys haven't uh, 
didn't join us too early on i uh started off the stream with literally a couple of minutes before kicking off i had uh got my 50th like and then this stream has uh been very very good yeah just having lots of people around which is awesome um love having you guys hanging out with me really appreciate it um so yeah like yeah, uh, I'm going for affiliate, which having the 50 likes will now get me to, which is awesome. Um, once I get my concurrent stream, uh, you know, numbers up, which hopefully today will do that. Um, so yeah, but really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, so yeah. All right, let's do a second layer of gold on this icon. Neef, have you got any ideas what you think you'll add next to your Marines? Yeah, okay. That's that's fair enough, man. Like, I do agree not giving them the vehicle keyword. Um, I would just say that they don't have the bike keyword. I wouldn't give them a new keyword and just have them as the ATV keyword. That way you're just isolating them out as a unit and it's not as, um, you know, it won't be as, as a problem because otherwise if you give them a vehicle, then the uh, Master of the Forge can do the exact same thing. To an extent. Yep, that's fair, man. The, um, the Blade of Guard Ancient is a large model, like... I've got one sitting behind me that I'll pull over in a second. I'm just going to scoot back up this uh, gold. So, this guy right here, being the ancient, he is, he is huge. He's absolutely huge. Personally, I don't have any Imperial Knights, Kratos. Um, I have played against them previously. I had quite a bad game very early on when they were released. And it just turned me off them, to be honest. Um, but yeah. So, if, in terms of a size comparison, that's what you're looking at for the Ancient. It's, it's a lot. It's so big. He's so big, the banner, as well. Like, he's even bigger than a standard Primaris Ancient. From Dark Imperium, so nah. The the um, Blade Guard looks sick. Um, I'm actually running the Lieutenant that you get in the um, Indominus as the Blade Guard Sergeant, just to help um, out with that. So, but yeah.
Mm. Yeah, no. Definitely is not worth it, Neath. 100% agree. Because it costs you three command points, right? Unless you've got a character that gives you additional command points on top of it. You know, it's not really the point. So. But yeah. Alright. So, next up, we're going to start on the touch-ups, is what we're going to do. So, yeah, yeah, like, it, it's a nice display piece, for sure, and it, like, for you Kratos, I probably would recommend not getting one straight away, because <laughs> um, it is quite a complex kit, as well as being quite a lot to paint. Um, so, it may be something you want to do later down the line. Um, something to strive for. Yeah, true. True, Neef. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Um... Yeah, look, I'm not the biggest fan of the Skeleton Banner myself as well. Um, so, I, I, I'm kind of with you on that, because I can't actually store this guy in any of my cases because of how big he is. Um, so, is what it is, I guess. Alright. Touch-ups time. Ah, so you got the three assault intercessors with the paint kit. Yeah, that's that's a good start to just try out painting and and figure out what you want to do, man. That's a good start. So right now I'm just going over where the bronze on the shoulder pad went over the actual uh, shoulders, or the actual inside rim I should say. Turns out I'm going to need to turn my dehumidifier on again. Because it's getting a bit warm in here. Yeah, for sure, Neef. For sure. Yeah, Kratos, it's a good way to start, dude. 100%. Um agree with starting it that way um so all right now i'm gonna change up brushes so i'm just gonna swap to a uh detail brush an army painted detail brush and i'm gonna water this blue right the way down 
so I can get a nice smooth coat over this shoulder pad. But yeah, we might actually get some, to some terrain today. You know, might be a bit of a longer stream, which is nice. Um, but I will need to get some lunch soon. I am feeling pretty hungry. So. And then whilst I'm doing the shoulder pad, may as well do the gun at the same time, which is a storm bolter. Um, but I am going to have to do bolt guns for these guys because of the new death watch rules. Storm bolters no longer get a rule for them called special issue ammunition. So. Yeah, I, I agree with Neef on that one for you, Kratos. Um, so, Yeah, it'd definitely be a, a, a good next spot to start with for you, man. So. And it shouldn't be too expensive either. Um, Yeah, I did. I did answer. Yeah, I did answer him, Neef. So. But yeah, so. Now I like the way that they've done the, the recruit boxes and the, the different levels. Like we saw that with Age of Sigmar first um, in terms of the, um, I think it was the most latest edition for them. The, the one that include, introduced the Night Haunt. 
um, in it. So, you know, it's it's definitely a good system, the three-tier system that they've got going. So... It also means it's going to be easy for you to pick up new stuff as well because you can go the next um, one up with the Elite, you'll get a Captain, you'll get some bikes, and you'll get... Hmm, yeah. So they do they do add new factions every so often, but it's quite rare. I think the latest added faction was Oh goodness. It would have been not Gene Stealer Cult. I think it was all the um Custodes was the latest new faction. Or the most recent, I should say. Um, at least for 40k. For 30k, uh, not 30k, sorry, for Age of Sigma, they, they're adding a lot of new stuff in terms of new armies and such to it quite regularly. But yeah, Neith, definitely agree with you as well. Like, a next step after getting the Recruit Edition would be to go to a Combat Patrol box like the Death Watch one, for example. Um, would be a good spot. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think Tau was third or fourth, it was around that point. Admech was, yeah, sixth. Gene Stealers and Custode seventh. Sisters of Battle got revamped in eighth. Yeah, 100% agree with that, dude. That's, that sounds about right to me. Sounds about right to me. Oh. But yeah, oh, guys, it's been a it's been a long stream so far, or well, good stream so far, I should also say. Um, all right, next up we need metal. They do take a lot of time to introduce the new factions as well. Um, so they don't just rush them out every every uh edition or so they they generally will pick one and it gets a revamp or they'll pick two and they'll add new stuff and it takes time it takes time to develop so all right Yeah, they did hint at squats as well. So, we might see them return, who knows. Yeah, at this stage, we'll see what happens, really. But, 
you know, they've brought back Zotes for um, various things, so what's to stop them bringing back Squats? Not much. Not much, really. They've just got to have their own unique aesthetic, I believe. Because otherwise, they'll just be another marine style list. Ah! <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious, Neef. If it was um, a sub faction of Tau. Like, man, that would be, uh... Yeah, that'd be hilarious. I don't think I'll need to touch up the metal on that yet, but that needed the touch up of the metal. So, now we'll get the metal and, and pack it away. Alrighty. Oh, I think I'm just gonna stand up and stretch for a second, chat. I'm just a bit. Oh. oh. Bit tight. I didn't go to the gym yesterday. Normally I do on Fridays, but my knee was playing up on me. wasn't wasn't fun. Um. So. Just want to stretch out a little bit because I've been painting for you know close to two and a half three hours now. Which I'll probably push on for another hour or so as well. So, but it's been uh, been great to have you around. And I'm just going to jump out of Discord so it doesn't uh, bug out on me. There we go. So, ah, I should probably uh, apply uh, a roll to myself. There we go. We'll close that off. Cool. Alright. Now that the metal's done, what I'm going to do... Hopefully it's dry for the most part, which it should be. I'm going to flip the Storm Bolter over. And I'm going to do touch-ups on it. On the actual hand itself. Um, because we'll also do the black on here as well at the same time. So. Alright. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd like to see the squats go a very similar route to what the, um, Caradron Overlords like kind of a similar but more spacey route um, for their style. I reckon it'll work. They're effectively space dwarves, yeah. Um, so. Um, 
But yeah, they were... They got axed a number of years ago because they were too similar to Marines. And, and they played, you know, just... Like they were another Marine army and they didn't have anything too unique. So I'd like to see them develop some uniqueness for them if they do bring it back. So... Which be interesting to see whether they do or not. So. Yeah, dude, they are. They they're so so different aesthetically in terms of how they look and how and even as how they play can be quite different. Even from a you know Space Marine Army to Space Marine Army, going from Blood Angels to Dark Angels will have they play so different um, in terms of the units that they can take their their chapter tactics. Like there's just so much that they can change and, and can be different on. And so, it's great to, you know, see how they all play. And you'll experience by playing against them more often than playing with them. By seeing what works and playing against players that have played them for years and years and years. So... Yep, I agree with you there as well, Nath. The rule of cool is the best rule of this hobby. And I think a lot of people don't understand the rule too well. Unfortunately. Especially if they're more competitive inclined. But there are definitely some that who are competitive in competitively inclined that do. So I'm just doing all the touch-ups on the arm and the Storm Bolter. Uh, yes and no. Like, there'll be things that you want to have modelled on there, but they won't really count for anything. Which is fine. Uh, it depends on the tournament organizer, Nick. Like personally, I'm a, I am a tournament organizer. I'm a vendor organizer in my local area, um, so I, I try to, you know, especially with detachments and, and you know different chapter taxes and all that kind of stuff that was prevalent in eight. It's it's, you know, I, I like to lean more on the side of what you see is what you get. Um, 
with as minimal counts as or anything like that as you go. But in general play, you won't have an issue. So. Alright. So I think now I can do the metal on there. And I want to grab the character brush for this. Now, you guys can't see, but I've got a massive pile of paintbrushes over here, which is insane for what I use. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, no. In that case, it just counts as bolter, right? Which is fine. So, in that instance, I wouldn't have a care in the world. Yeah. So we're getting there with the, the storm bolter, so the metal's all just been touched up, which is great. Um, I've just got the gold parts to go, and then that'll be the storm bolter touched up. Then we'll get back to the shield. Because that still needs uh, some base coats done on it. So. But yeah. Uh, hope you guys are having a good day. Chat, I always appreciate you guys joining me. It's just good to see. It's good to see a lot of you guys as well. Alright. Alright, let's go with... A little bit of this goal, the Retributor Armor. Touch up the skull on the storm altar. Like, that's fair enough, Neef. Like, again, it's down to the tournament organiser. Um, you know, personally, like, as long as you're consistent in the chapter tactics you're using, I don't care if you want to run Ultramarines as Death, Gu as, uh, Death Watch. I couldn't care. As long as you're consistent with the colour scheme and the detachment and the chapter tactics you're using, the problem that I would have is if you're running a detachment that's Ultramarines, painted as Ultramarines, and a detachment of Death Watch that's painted as Ultramarines. That I would have a problem with. Because then you're not able to tell, you know, which are, which are the Ultramarines and which are the, the actual Death Watch. From being able to easily tell. So... But, 
in comparison, ninth's a lot better for that than what 8th was, because ninth edition, you have to pay command points to take detachments, whereas you never used to. You get command points for taking detachments. Um, so. Which I think is a great change, to be fair. Alright, so now that's drying. The skull's drying. I'm going to flip this over so I can touch up the bronze. Actually, the bronze doesn't need it. Bronze is actually pretty good. So, we're actually going to call the storm bolts are done there. And then, we're going to fix up the bronze on this dude. So, yeah. Like, that's just that's just an experience thing as well. Uh, for me, being a, being a tournament organiser, um, for the most part... For a number of years now, I understand how to pick things apart like that and explain why you don't want to run that or, you know, have it seen that way, if that makes sense. So, and even in that regard, if you've got any rules, questions, or anything along those lines, feel free to ask. Like, I'm happy to dig into it, walk you through my thoughts on it on stream. More than happy to, uh, you know. I'm more here to provide, you know, an outlet for you guys to ask questions and such. Yeah, the, the rules for Crusade do look good. Uh, they do look like good fun. Uh, I think the problem will be is you'll have to limit um, people running um, their faction-specific ones until... I, I would say most factions get them. At least in my opinion. Yeah, Kratos, dude. Anytime, brother. Anytime at all. Um, you know? Especially, like, on the Discord in the 40k gaming channel. Like, chuck a question up. I mightn't see it straight away. But I'm happy to answer questions anytime. Um, so... Because, you know, we're all in this hobby together. We're all here to you know, help each other, and, you know, the point of the channel is, at least for me, is I want to share my experience, I want to share my hobby, uh, hobby skill and knowledge with, with other people. I don't want to just keep it to myself, because, you know, it's, you know, there's no benefit, there's no growth for you guys out there, right? So, that's just my thoughts. So I'm glad that you find it super helpful and that you appreciate it. Nah, that's 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 awesome to hear, man. That's that's effectively why I'm doing this. Yeah. Like, the marine ones are okay. I haven't looked too much into them as well. Like, I haven't seen the Necron ones either. Um, so... It, it's more of a thing of... And I know this is hard to mitigate, but it's a FOMO thing. Like, a fear of missing out. Which, you know, it sucks. And I think the best way to do it is to, like, mitigate it in terms of that form. Because, you know, otherwise it's only Marines and Necrons that have got their own Codex Crusade stuff. And, you know, that's that's not, you know, particularly fun for people to come in and go, cool, you've got this, 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 because it's Marines or it's, cause it's Necrons. Um, and I can't do anything like that at the moment. That's, you know, that's a bit, doesn't feel good. Makes you want to do it, but you can't do it. So, yeah. It's not that it's a balanced thing. It's more of a, you know, you want people to be able to do the same things. Or at least have the ability to do similar stuff. Like, they don't even have to be the exact same, for example. Um, it It's just... You want to make sure that they're going to have a good time uh, playing with a Crusade rule set. Um, you know, it, like, I ran an event for it a couple of weeks back. Um... Actually, it's more like a month now. It went okay. There are some things I need to tweak for, for this style. But that's fine. Like, it was my first event style of that. Um, you know, the guys did enjoy it. And that's that's the main thing. 
So everyone's going to have their own opinions. Everyone's going to have their own way of wanting to run things. You know, and again, comes down to personal preference. Yeah, like there's going to be, you know, there's going to be supplements like Beyond the Veil and, and that that do give some crusade rules to all factions and such, but it's just hard. You know, because you want, you want everyone to have a good time. You don't want to have anyone feeling as though they can't, you know, that they're not getting the same love. And, and effectively that could just comes down to GW's release schedule more than anything. So, I mean, heck, I'd absolutely love to see a Crusade book for all factions just straight out of the gate. Um, or something like that would have been, like, really cool. Yeah, right. So... You can take it on, you know, a number of different unit types, which is cool. Like, I appreciate that. So, it's, it is things like that that do help. But when they're in the base rules themselves, um, you know, that's when it becomes like, well, everyone can do that. Like, I want to do faction-specific stuff if you're building a narrative for your own, like, for Tau, for example... Like, you want to be able to do tower-specific stuff, like certain um, crisis suit systems or things like that, you know? So, at least, yeah, that's just my thought. My thoughts on it. I do think it's a great idea, though, the Crusade system, having it where, you know, sure, there might be battle scars and all that from units that die, but it's only on a specific roll, and, you know, it's not, you know, they're completely wiped out every single time. They've just got a negative effect. So. Yeah, I, li I really like the way that they approached it um, and how they've executed it um, in terms of, like, the actual base rule set for Crusade. So, but yeah. Alright, this is the part where I need to be really careful is in here. Yeah, I, uh, back in 7th edition, I used to, yeah, nice, man, nice, that you run your own, um, cadre, that's awesome, dude. For me, I, uh, I've been on the, the receiving end of some, uh, nasty Tau stuff. I remember back in 7th edition, and I'm not sure if you were around playing back then, uh, Neef, but playing, uh, the, the ghost cadre, um, where it was, like, two units of ghost kills. Oh, no, it was unit, I think it was, yeah, it was unit of ghost kills and two units of stealth suits. And how bent that was, like, yeah, sure, I was playing Battle Company, but the fact that it just had cover saves left, right, and center, no matter what, was was the hard thing so everyone will have their gimmick everyone will have their ability um so i just think certain things need to be taken into consideration before release which they're now actually doing via playtesting thank the lord Yeah. 
What do you primarily run in your um, stealth cadre, Neef? But yeah, no, just, I'm getting the touch-ups done on this dude. I'm, I'm just doing the front first, then I'll get to the back. Um, just slowly chipping away at it, which is good. But I do have to get back to do the shield. That's the next part I need to finish. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday or Friday night, depending on where you are in the world. I know it's getting quite late over in uh, the UK, I'm pretty sure. And the States is still probably around like 5, 6 o'clock at night, if I'm right. So, if I have that right, though. Yeah, awesome, Kratos. How you actually? Are you playing uh, Destiny Two? Yeah, yeah, nine PM. Okay, cool. So it's probably on the west coast. It's probably um, like five PM or something like that. Yeah, dude, how are you finding it? I've been watching a bunch of um, some of my favorite streamers actually play that at the moment. Um, I played Destiny One, but I never got like fully into it. So I'd love to, you know. How you how are you finding it? Yeah, nice, Neve. That that seems like a good list. Is that two thousand points or is it fifteen hundred? Fifteen hundred. Uh, 
I do tend to play Tarkov a fair bit, Kratos. I do. Um, except I, uh, I don't uh, play it on stream too often, just because, you know, it does get quite um, flooded in terms of the Tarkov streaming side of things. So I do play it offline, though. Um, I do enjoy it. Um, I generally play when I've got other people to play with. Um, that's when I enjoy it most. Because otherwise I just die and I die and I die and it's just, yeah. Oh, cool, Neef. Nice. So, yeah, no, I, I do enjoy, I do enjoy Tarkov. There's also Hades sitting there that I play. Ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it, it's, um, I was watching a video from these, um, I forget what they're called. I think it's Viva La Dirt League. I think it is, and they were, they did a Tarkov development parody, um, and pretty much, like, they were saying how the game, they want the game to be designed like you're getting kicked in the balls every time. And sometimes it definitely feels like that, repeatedly. So... Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's good. I've got, like, for those of you who don't know, like, Tarkov is a hyper-realistic looter shooter, um, that's good fun. Uh, it's very challenging, but also very rewarding. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's such a good analogy, isn't it, um, Kratos? Um, it, it's, uh, getting kicked in the nuts simulator 2020. Um, is what uh, some people like to call it. Me being one of them. Because it's just so brutal. Um, but yeah, no, like, it's it's good. Um, Neef, how do you find that list goes for you, man? Do you, you find you go pretty well with it? Because I know I, I've he been hearing that Tower in a bit of a rough spot at the moment. Um, so I'd love to hear how your going with your games with that list <laughs> yep yep Kratos that's definite definite uh, agreement there it has kicked a lot of people's asses Oh, dude, Neef, that's nuts. That is a nuts tactic for your list. So, yeah. Dude, that looks... That sounds sick. Yeah, look. I feel for you guys at the moment. I really do. Over in the States, it's uh, quite rough. Um, so. But yeah. Nah, ho hope you. Hope you're pushing through, though, Kratos. Hope you're staying safe out there and looking after yourself. I think that's the most important thing at the moment. It's just... Yeah. Yeah, dude. Working from home is interesting. I, um... In my current job, um, which I got post-lockdown of my old job, um, I, uh, yeah, I've only just set up working from home stuff this week, just gone, and I can say it's actually not, not the greatest, at least the software I'm using, um, so, but, you know, you work with what you got, 
Yeah, awesome, man. That's good. That's great to hear. What you? What was your degree in? Oh, dude, that's sick. There's, oh, you'd be, yeah, you'd be in a, yeah, awesome, awesome. Like, yeah, I think, I think you guys are needed now more than ever, I think we realise. Yeah, dude, that's nuts. That's it's good to hear that your list is going well and it's working nicely for you. Um, so yeah. Hmm. Something's going on with my evaporative cooler. I'm just gonna change the style on it so it just keeps on going. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So, nah. But it's glad to hear that you're going well. Um, for me, I uh, graduated two years ago with a Bachelor of um, Arts in Architecture. However, I had no luck finding work in architecture, so I worked in retail for a while. I was a assistant store manager and then eventually became a manager and then eventually stood down from that because being a manager of a retail store sucks. Um, and is extremely taxing, despite what everyone might say. Um, and, uh, yeah, so now I, uh, I actually work in, for the Australian government as a public servant. So, which is good. Like, I'm in a, I'm a data analyst as well. So, I work a lot with, um, data and handling that side of stuff so yeah which has been good i've been doing that since late june yeah so it's it's been great to um you know work in that sphere and do something completely new that's a complete and utter challenge for me and plus i've always been a you know pretty techy in terms of my leanings knowing you know my dad did um what oh gosh he was a um, he did uni for two years before he dropped out he was doing software engineering so i i learned quite a bit of my tech savvy from him yeah right neef that's that's rough man when a when a mission favors your opponent over yourself it's hard to deal with that and to just keep on going and, and you know do the best that you can with the with what you've got um so especially when the mission's against you like there was a game on stream i played a couple of weeks back against one of the local guys oh dude that's yeah tabling turn four that's huge um yeah no i played a game against one of my local guys matt um, and he was running a, um, Raven Guard list that had a lot of Phobos, and we got the mission that it was a part of our local league, and the mission was you can't use, um, any, uh, whatchamacallit, um, any alternate deployment options, and so it really hamstrung him. So, and it meant that a lot of my stuff was on the, on the table and just able to blast away. And that is the first time I've seen my Nightbot decide to put that message in the entire time I've been streaming this year. I finally got it figured out, guys. Awesome. But 
but yeah. No, I've only been I've only been streaming since probably about two three months ago, so it's still relatively new to me. Um, so yeah, no, I appreciate all the support and all the follows. Um, um, Kratos, I generally will do a Saturday stream on a weekly basis. Um, there won't be one coming up though. Um, generally it'll either be morning or afternoon. I'm finding morning streams go a lot better. So I'll be doing, um, 10 AM more than likely going forward for my morning streams. And I'll probably go for about three and a half, four and a half hours. Um, and then I'll alternate between Tuesday nights for Tuesday night fight, which is, uh, games at my local gaming store. And then also, uh, Friday nights where I do another hobby stream as well. So I understand that you're probably not going to be awake being in the States at those times, which is completely fair. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, the Saturdays are probably the, the, you know, the best bet for you catching me, my man. Um, you know, going from there, we'll see, you know, if there's other times that I can add in, but they're, they're kind of the times and the Tuesdays and the Fridays are alternating. So I didn't stream last uh, Friday night, just gone. So last night, but I will be streaming next Friday night. So um, that's when I'll be streaming, my man. So thanks for joining me today, brother. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, yeah, right, Neef. The, um, yeah, you take it easy as well, man. Stay safe out there, hey? Um, yeah, that's insane. No scout moves or deep strike. Will do, man. Will do. Um, yeah, that's very similar to the mission that I played on stream against, uh, the guy, my mate, Matt, um, that I'm telling you about. So, so yeah. It's definitely like it. Some of the deployments hurt when it's got rules like that. I reckon. Uh, in terms of the missions. So. Yeah. Right. So, I remember an old school mission that was like that. That was years ago now. They're very rare nowadays, those style of missions. So. I can understand why the rule was there, but. That type of mission is actually quite hard to be able to get units off the board. Um, because. You know, you want to shoot everything and you want to stop your opponent and your opponent's wanting to stop you and. It can just get quite hairy. And you just do the fight. Oh gosh, yeah, no. Custodes are brutal. Um, so. I, I could... Yeah, that, that would be rough, dude. That would be absolutely rough. Yeah, I'm just getting in behind the shield and... Yeah, dude. 
Trying to get tower past custodes is like water on rock. So, nah, dude, that's yeah. It's rough. So, I hope that you're able to at least do some damage to him. That he didn't just walk past without uh, much resistance. Oh. Whilst that shield dries, I'm going to do the touch-ups on the dude's torso. <laughs> yeah, glad to hear that you still had some funny moments though, Neef. That's sick. Uh, at least you, you were able to have some... Uh, moments that were enjoyable during your game you know there have been games that I've had that have been similar and they're just not enjoyable at all so if you had an enjoyable game that's awesome to hear dude absolutely awesome to hear I might do is I might finish the touch-ups at least for the black on this guy and then I think I might actually call it guys I'm feeling pretty hungry and a tad bit exhausted but I didn't get a good great night's sleep last night unfortunately so it always sucks when that happens but Yep, yep, right. Yeah. But yeah, no. Yeah, look, it, it takes practice and you take gameplay and you just take your licks and you, you go from there, really. So.
Yeah, that's yeah, that's so rough, dude. Like that's ah, oh, you'd be ruining your opponent doing that. They definitely feel it. That's for sure. He's getting there on his touch-ups, so I think we might. What you've all done? Yeah, you just need touch-ups now. Ah, oh, guys, it's been it's been great. It's been a great stream. It's been good fun having you. If you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, great to have you with us. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick five five minute break, guys. Um, just from painting um and just chill for a sec chat with you guys hang out you know i'm just a bit sore a bit tired a bit hungry so might actually um what i'll do is we'll be back in a second i'm just gonna go put some food on and then i will come back enjoy the tunes
I'm back, chat. Forgot to turn the mic back on. Um, just got some bread out so I can have some toasted cheese sandwiches for lunch. Um, Alright. What needs touch-ups on this dude? I think some of the metal does. I think the blue does. I'll keep on going for another 15 minutes or so, guys. Just get, hit that four hour mark. <laughs> so. However, I went downstairs and the, the wife isn't too happy with me, unfortunately. Um, apparently I'm too loud. <laughs> uh, and she's trying to write an essay, so. Not, uh, she's not too uh, happy with me right now. You know, it is what it is. I'm generally a loud person, so she shouldn't be surprised, I'd say. But yeah. Now, I hope you guys are enjoying the stream, enjoying the music, um, just hanging out with me, which is awesome. Um, so yeah. So just very carefully using the side of the brush to hit this edging on the on the cloak. So that it uh is nice and clean and crisp. But yeah. But yeah. Alrighty, Neve. Thanks for hanging out, man. Really appreciate it. Appreciate chatting with you. Uh, hopefully, I'll catch you soon, man. Alright, so that's the touch-ups on the cloak done. Now we're going to get into some of the other touch-ups as well. we got about 10 minutes left in the stream. Um, but yeah. Hope you guys are having a, a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me, really appreciate it. Uh, for those who have been here most of the time, or if you've just joined us, thanks. I am, a, I am on a bit of a push to uh, go for affiliates, which, I, which I'm not too far off of. So, I do greatly appreciate you guys joining us. 
or joining me, I should say, and having conversations with uh, you guys. So, yeah, thanks. All right, I'm gonna do the metal. Just getting into some of these tighter spots and just cleaning it up. Cool. So that's that part done uh, for the back. Does the gold need any? No, nah, the gold's pretty good. Yeah. Just touching up the metal around the back. Cool.
We're almost there, guys. Just finishing off this metal on the front so that I don't have to do any other metal touch-ups. Cool. Alright. I think there is going to be one little spot of red that I'm going to do. Just quickly. Oh gosh, I've had the wrong view on. <laughs> I completely forgot to change it, chat. Goodness me. I'm a bit thick. I got this camera right here. And you know, I'm not even using it. I didn't even notice. Until I just looked up at the screen just then. Goodness me. That means I definitely need some food. <laughs> Alright, guys. I'm, uh, I'm... Gonna, gonna wrap it up there for today. Look, thank you so much for joining me. It's been awesome to sit down and have, you know, we had Game on Steve with us uh, in chat uh, on Discord a bit earlier. We've had, you know, Nifri and um, Kratos and a couple of other guys jump in as well. Um, it's been awesome to have you guys hanging out with me today. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm just going to quickly look to see uh, if there is a um, another streamer we can go raid. Um, so let me just uh, find it. We'll go have a look and see who we can raid, hey? Um... Oh. Yeah, right. Alrighty. Um, guys, we're actually, uh, we're going to go raid a mate of mine who's been helping me out a bit. Um, he's a great bloke. He's actually in chat himself. Mango Smasher. We're going to go raid him. So, let me just prep that here. Um, I'm going to send you all over to him. Hopefully, is that going to work? It's not. Let me uh, just get into, into this here. Um, let's... No, I want to do something here. I don't know. It's going to send me somewhere else. All right. We're gonna refresh chat for a second, and I'm gonna I'm gonna see how to do this again. But we're, I'm gonna I am gonna send you. I'm gonna send you over to Mango. Ah, that's how it is. Um, um, so we are going to go... Raid Mango Smasher. Alrighty, we're gonna we're gonna go raid him. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I'm gonna call it there. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, and so I'm just gonna call it there. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with me for today. Um, go hang out with Mango Smasher. He's been lurking in my chat all all my stream. Really helping me out, getting my view count up, so I can um, yeah hit 
hit uh, affiliate, which I reckon I might do a might have hit today, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but for now, that's from all from me, guys. Uh, Scotty D49 signing off. Catches soon. <laughs>